Hey, what's up everybody? What's going on? How you guys doing out there? <laughs> and it is Monday. It is that time of the day. Some of you guys are getting ready to get off of work. Some of you guys have gotten off of work and that is awesome. So if you guys are starting to get off of work, it's time for us to get to work. And how you guys doing out there? I'm Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer. And I am finally coming at you today with... Hey everybody, it's License Hench. How you doing? Yeah, that's right. We are out there. We are big. We are bad. We are back and we got some stuff that we have to get to um, because this week we are finally finishing up one show and I'm kind of hitting you up with a double whammy because this week we're going to be, I'm going to be covering two episodes of Daredevil because we've got one episode of a new show that's come out and what show could that be <laughs> we're continuing season two of cloak and dagger not continuing my friend starting we're talking about the season premiere yeah, yeah the yeah. season premiere which was pretty good i enjoyed it well yeah we'll we'll, we'll, Spoilers. we'll, be, getting, we'll be getting to that in a few minutes so it's been um it's been a whole week since um you guys have been here watching us on the show, especially if you guys are patrons and all that stuff. Yes, patrons, I have been uploading the archive. It has been an ordeal, but we're getting it up. And now I can stay on top of it as best as, as, best as humanly possible on top of that. So I want to thank you for showing up. And of course, I got to thank my henchman right here. I, I, I'm seriously, hey, man, thank you for showing up. Thank you no for showing problem, up. Man. And of course, thank everyone over in NP City. How you guys doing over there? Whoop whoop, deck mob. All right. Wah, wah. Yeah, there we are. But before we get to any of that, it's business time. That means I'm down to my socks. And when I'm down to my socks, you know what that means. That means it's time for business. And what does it mean when it's business time? Well, this is the time of the show where I invite you guys to join us on Twitch, um, to join us, you know, to leave comments and all that stuff down there in the doobly-doo if you're watching this on YouTube or on Patreon or somewhere else later. But if you guys um, are used to this, this is our show every Monday. And every Monday or any time that we do a live show, you guys can actually join us here sometimes in NP City right over here or you can actually pull up a keyboard and you can send us emails and stuff that I do read on the show when you guys send them hint hint nudge nudge over at back in the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k at gmail.com also follow us over on YouTube check out the archive of the stuff that we have been doing for the past seven years where you can see the evolution of our camera equipment and our sound equipment and all that jazz follow us on twitter if you guys want to know what we're up to or you guys want to start a conversation with us that is at back in the deck at twitter also join us on deckers on the book that is the community post on that wretched hive of scum and villainy that we all call the facebook shout out to all of you multi-level marketers out there also if you guys are really into what we're doing but you can't watch us live or any of that stuff that's perfectly fine you can listen to us anytime you want by going over to soundcloud at soundcloud.com slash bid underscore p and subscribe to us there and we allow everyone and their mothers that's right your mama can get involved with this too by downloading our mp3s of our archive we do full mp3s of the show up on soundcloud so you can listen to them in your car you can listen to us while you're cleaning your house doing your chores not doing your homework because we're going to be distracted and of course if you're like me you can listen to us when you're in places like the bathroom just so that the public bathrooms don't seem so cold alone and distant also follow us over on the instagram now if 
it happens that you guys just like the stuff that we do and you want to help out and be contributors to all this stuff and get a little bit of a say in the stuff that we cover, then head on over to patreon.com slash bid underscore p and become a patron. Our tiers start as low as one dollar. That is right. One dollar a month and that gives you access to our entire video archive as of course I can I can upload them as fast as I can and at one dollar you get access to the archives we send you a keychain we say thank you thank you thank you for all that stuff and our tiers go up to a hundred bucks but seriously if you can only do ten dollars a month that's perfectly fine matter of fact at the ten dollar tier we start sending out gaming stuff and toys so isn't that fun and isn't that great so now that we have done all that and i've done the business time known in more savvy circles as begging yes i'm begging you guys please 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 that's about all of the royalties from james brown's estate that i can afford um so with that um yeah how was your week man how was your week uh intense but good uh, intense yeah intense i had a i did my first uh craft show so i was there in my full mad science regalia as dr libram and I sold some of the insane, crazy, and in a couple cases, horrifying things that I make. And uh, had a pretty good first showing, learned a lot, and uh, we'll be doing it again probably next year. Okay. Well, that yeah. that most definitely is a thing. But you were actually out just doing, um, you were out trying to work and make money. How how is that a a, a thing? I gotta start. Yeah, you know, seriously, this is why I'm asking for the Patreon guys. Y'all y'all gotta help me pay this dude. <laughs> um, yeah, how do you spell license to hinch again? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, because um, yeah, we got uh, some pictures and all that jazz of the stuff that you've been doing and putting together, right? Yeah, you know, just some of this stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at that. That that was definitely the show pleaser, the heart shaped box. Well, you know, it was Kurt Cobain's um, yeah. birthday this week, so or uh, anniversary of his suicide. So you were that guy going, "Hey, wait! I got a new complaint. You should totally get this in honor of the dude from Seattle." <laughs> um, oh, isn't she adorable? Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, uh, the, my that's my little nightmare. She became my size my size reference model, but uh, she just sort of happened, and I kept trying to get someone to buy her so she would go away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that thing is creepy as all get out, man. Ooh, boy, excuse me. Yeah, that thing is creepy as all get out. You know, but uh, the first one of those I sold was actually purchased by a couple who were going to use it as their wedding ring box. So, yeah, I'm well, like, hey, I thought that was pretty cool. Wedding ring box, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, in the immortal words of Sting, um, when he found out that a couple was like, every breath you take is going to be our wedding vow. Um, best of luck. Best of luck. But uh, yeah, I think we might actually have some more pictures of the stuff that you were doing. Um, yeah. So, you know, you got the little nightmare and again. You know, for all of you guys out there that are really, 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 really wanting to capture the heart of the one that you love, well, if you can't capture it, you can buy it from License to Hinch. So yeah. look at that. You know. Ah, uh, hey. Those so are, that's why I was feeling funny. <laughs> those are Rat Girl's stabby friends because a stabby friend is a friend forever. There we have the Cthulhu Blade. Ooh. Two, uh, uh, two true believers took those home. Uh, of course one of them did. there was no debate. The other one, she, she hem and hawed, but eventually uh, decided to go for it. I love him and hawn. Yep. It reminds me of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, donkeys. But yeah, so, you know, that that's the whole thing. So that's where you were last week. Yep. All right. Cause... More importantly, that's why I was crazed last week. Because ah. I was packing and price tagging and boxing and... And all Wrangling that jazz, and, you know. Course, yeah, no, I get you. Every I... time I get a box centered, one of the, my little nightmares would just reorganize everything and and then tear up the tags and spell red rum across the floor because I thought that was cute. Well, yeah, yeah, because what else? What I mean, what else are <sighs> little nightmares going to do? Yeah. Okay. Oh my God! Ah, we're too loud. I'm we're too loud. We're from too loud. Ah, ah, you can shut up there. Um, but yeah, so that's um, that is a really really cool thing that you mm -hmm. ended up doing but you know like i said sign up to the patreon so i quit losing him to these fairs and all that jazz and yeah oh i was gonna say also uh the stick man inf inflicted more of uh dc's uh streaming content on me 
Oh. I decided to avoid uh, with the show I like. So to you call got DP by Stickman, huh? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I avoided I avoided the F Batman hour, but I was I was shockingly surprised at how good uh, uh, Doom Patrol was. Oh God, man! I'm watching this going. One, they had me at the narration. <laughs> when the second episode is, who's watching this? Oh, fan Grant boys. Morrison fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the fanboys and the the three the three viewers who decided to stick around after the farting donkey. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, because there is any amount of money you have to pay for Alan Tudyk is worth every penny. Every penny. Yes. You know, he, he makes, was antagonist to my favorite Disney princess. You know that? Yes. <laughs> he, make, he, he makes a great villain slash narrator in this. Mm. And uh, yeah, it is, it is a very fun show. It's also lensed very well. Yeah. It, 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 well, it's shot amazingly well because TV in this day and age has got to step up its game. Yeah. It's really got to step up its game because the movies are coming out hard. Let me move my mic a little bit. And the streaming services ain't no joke. The streaming services are like, hi, network television. How you doing? So uh, people pay seven bucks a month for everything I show. Everything. What do you got to offer? Commercials? <laughs> and then they're like, oh, yeah, well, we're just going to up our game because we're ABC or CBS or NBC. And they're like, oh, you're going to up your game? We don't have censors. We're like cable was in the 80s. What are you going to do? What you going to do? <laughs> and, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. <you know. laughs> so yeah, and I mean, yeah, the, the stuff gets made made for direct for streaming that would never get made for broadcast television, or mm -hmm. even for film release, and for various reasons. So you're seeing a lot of new people come out with a lot of really good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, of course, a lot of it is also it's so dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it's so dark. It's oh. so good, but it's so dark. Yeah, it's it's like Ryan Reynolds is just there. Could I get you to scoot over just a little bit, just Left to your right? right. Right. To your right, to okay. your right, yeah. Because okay, you're just sinking all the way into the frame. Okay. It's just, I'm like, yeah, all right, where you at? Where you at, man? Yeah, that's better. See? Isn't that prettier, guys? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the whole thing. Okay, good. So, yeah. Um, but I will say, um, I finally had three hours this last week to do something other than work. And I caught up on the TV that I, that I was watching, and I just forgot that I was watching. Mm -hmm. Just, just, have you ever done that? You just started a show and then it took a break or you took a break and you just never got around to getting back to it as much as you enjoyed it. It's oh, yeah. Just like, oh. yeah. No, I do that. I did that with a lot of my shows. Yeah. And then, and then it's like, oh, well now it's like, I'll have to wait until it, the, the season's over. And now I got to wait till it shows up on Netflix because it's in that weird world where it's no longer available. And then it's like, oh, well I stopped watching it. And yeah, I did that with, uh, uh, Lucifer did mm -hmm. that with a bunch of different shows. Yeah, well, uh, I ended up doing it with Steven Universe. Oh, yeah. yeah. Steven Universe I'm way behind on. Because... Oh, dude. Yeah, they, they, they cleaned up the season. They finished mm -hmm. the season. And you know how that break when we stopped watching was right when he met White Diamond? And yeah. And you kind of go, wow, this lady is a little bit frightening. She's almost like a debutante. Or actually, when I was watching it, um, I saw that the new episodes had dropped and the season finished up, so I sat down um, with my significant other, and she was like, oh, wait, did you say that this show was made by a woman? I'm like, yeah, actually a very intelligent and very talented woman. And she's like, hmm, she must have had a very powerful and very upper middle class daughter because White Diamond is very much a debutante's mom. <laughs> and I'm like... Yeah. Do tell. Do tell. <laughs> this is this ain't my world. Yeah. I, I'm not from that kind of thing. And and of course, then my girl started quoting her mom. Yeah. Saying everything that White Diamond did. And I'm like, ah, ah. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, I, it hurts. I, I'm not I'm not Pink Diamond. I'm a human. I'm made of fleshy stuff. Oh, stop being silly, dear. Go to your room and stop being playing around with this nonsense. Yeah. 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 It was just terrifying. Yeah. Yes. Denial. Just, and Weaponized. Uh, not, not just weaponized denial, but when you look at how everybody was afraid of her and that cycle of abuse yeah. that went down. And I I'm mean, like, oh. For me, for me, because I only saw the first episode where she's introduced, that, where they took the break. I haven't caught up oh, yet even myself. Yeah. But that first scene where you see her pearl mm -hmm. and her pearl is cracked and you're like, oh, that's not good. That is not good at all. It's actually funny. In the finale... You actually get to see the origins of her pearl. 
Oh wow. Yeah. That that must yeah. be a bit of a roller coaster. Not really. It happened very quickly. Ah. Very quickly. And then you're like, oh, oh, and you know, all that stuff. But um yeah. but yeah, I caught up on that. And um and then I'm like sitting up going, all right, so cloak and dagger drop cloak cloak and dagger drop blah, 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 blah. That was when I got on the phone with you. And I'm like, all right, all right, here you go. Uh yeah, yeah all right, yeah. Uh, let me know if you got it on Hulu and blah, blah, blah. And um and yeah, because I'm like, oh, dude, because, you know, I'm used to these things like Netflix and Amazon dropping like the whole season mm -hmm. or an episode a week. And I hate this whole we're going to drop two episodes. We'll see you later. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I, I can't I can't stand that whole. All right. I know you want it season two. Here are the first two. What are and the it's rest like, coming out soon? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, now the next one drops on the 11th. The mm -hmm. next one drops on uh, the next couple episodes drop at 11. And unfortunately, there's only eight episodes in this season. I said I only had three hours that I wasn't working. All right. The rest of it, I had to work. Um, and part of that work is doing the research and yeah. looking up everything and all that jazz. So, um, so um, this week, I'm going to go first again because okay. I got two episodes that I have to get through on okay. Daredevil. Um, because this is, this is the finale. This is where everything, um, not just comes to a head, but all the stuff that comes down. But, you know, I, I missed you last weekend, man. I had to do the show by myself, <laughs> which probably explains why we don't have that many viewers right now. Cause, oh my God, it was just me talking <laughs> at the screen. It was just, man, yeah, yeah, it wasn't any banter. It was just like, yeah, this is what I'm watching. Hi. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, but we had a lot of stuff that came down in the last episode. Um, in that last episode, we had Agent Nadim that was pretty much saying, all right, this has gone too far. The dude killed a priest. Um, get Karen Page out of here. All that stuff. Yeah. So episode 12. Um, episode 12 does some interesting things when it opens. Um, we've got essentially um, they ran away they had to run away and say all right this is this is what we're doing cuz we got to run away from fisk cuz fisk fisk is um, he he's he controls everything he controls everything and i just betrayed him so i am in a bit of a pickle <laughs> just a little bit of a pickle so they're like all right um i know the local the local cop will try and get you set up there and um and so they agree, um, they agree to, um, head over to, um, yeah, they, they agree to head over to the neighborhood cops, um, um, yeah, the neighborhood cops' mom's house. They actually hit him at, hit her at the mom's house, and Agent Nadim's wife was like, nope, 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 I'm done, I'm done. But, yeah, let's take a quick look, and I've got my, um, I've got the subtitles going because i don't want to get hit you know so let's uh take a look here Ooh, oh look at that and um marvel yes copyright haha <laughs> i did um i did a little stuff with the audio effects because it was coming up dark okay it kept coming up dark on the stream so i had to fix that but the show opens with fisk getting a helicopter to get the one thing that he's been working this hard for was that his girlfriend? Uh, of course. It, it, yeah, he had Because that Vanessa. smile on his face was like, at last, my one <laughs> true love is here. <laughs> oh, uh, sweet mystery of life. And they better not they better not scuff her luggage or I'm going to have to decapitate someone. Oh, yeah. Well, Again. Well, you know. In today. The, well, in the last episode, um, the one that you missed, um, there was a moment. And, of course, she comes walking out and she's just like, hey, darling, how you doing? And he's like, oh, you are so... You. Hello, Wilson. I, I, I've missed you. I turn into a teddy bear with you. But, um, yeah, in the last episode, um, there was that moment where he found out that Bullseye got away and they couldn't find, um, Vanessa. And he had a fantastic moment with the dude that gave him the news, very much saying, take off your jacket. Okay, yes, I, I need, I, I would like your jacket. And the guy's like... Well, you know, I guess it is kind of hot. We are in the back of the limo, so let me just take off my seatbelt and take off my jacket. And Okay, here you go, boss. And he grabbed the jacket, and he wrapped the dude's head up in the jacket and just beat him to death through the jacket. And the driver's like, all right, ain't me. 
<laughs> not not me you know that kind of thing so yeah so they set agent nadim up at um the cop's mom's house <laughs> that 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 is not a stable hr policy what what you you fail and i beat you to death while wrapping your head up in my own clothing you yeah, killing the messenger well you know it's a thing yeah. What you're supposed to do is do that in front of the guy and then promote him into that position so he's motivated to get the job done. <laughs> now, Gary, it's you. your job to find her. Don't disappoint me. Yeah. Oh, by the way, take care of that. Well, yeah. It, I it, mean, that's basic Mastermind 101. It very much is the apology accepted, Captain Nita. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You will find the rebels. Do not fail me. You know? But, again... It's a different thing. Didn't King he Pen read Vader's book, how to how to impress and motivate people? He didn't really need to. Mm. King Pen's got it. He's just yeah. he comes from a different school. That's all. Different school, different technique. Um, well, he was smart enough to wrap his head wrap his head in his jacket so he didn't get blood splatter all over his side of the limo. He had just had that thing detailed. And that white suit, though. Yeah. You know that that white suit. So <laughs> it's um, made of a space age material. Blood actually cleans it. Um, not quite, not quite <laughs> blood cleans it, but it is knife proof as they covered in season one with the dude that made their devil suit and all that stuff. So, and that, that's important. It's really important to remember that. Um, and of course, um, you know, some, a few key points, agent Nadim is like, all right, I'm going to testify and you know, I just need to get me and my family safe. <laughs> You know, so they're like, all right, um, I know a cop will put you up at his mama's house. <laughs> and sure enough, he does. But this is the episode where the chickens come home to roost for mm. Agent Nadim. This is a really, really hard one for him. Because this is the character that we've been following throughout mm. the entire season. And you see how he became corrupt, how he, like, how he got compromised. And mm -hmm. over the course... and. There are two things about this season, which is one, death by inches is real, and two, sometimes you just gotta scream. I mean, those, those are really the two major, yeah. major themes, yeah. you know? Um, and yeah, so, um, so yeah, but there is an interesting thing. When I say the chickens come home to roost with the whole being compromised by Kingpin and being wanted for mur murder and are possibly being wanted for murder if the Kingpin decides to push the button and the Kingpin has already compromised Foggy's family, Although Foggy's running for district attorney, and now it's like, so should I drop out of the race? And Kingpin's people are like, no, we want you to win. Because if you win, we still control you. So that's the game he plays. Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know. The, yeah. The, the problem is they've made him, they've made Kingpin too effective. They made him too good at being one step ahead of everyone and controlling everything. See, that that is where I got to disagree. I got to disagree because, again... Well, they, they've shown that his ability to manipulate and anticipate is actually kind of superpower. Uh, yeah, yeah, it very much is. But again, when you're in prison, you ain't got nothing to do but think and work out. That's all you got. That That's your day. Your day is lifting weights and thinking about what you're going to do when you get out. That's the whole thing. Yeah, well, the problem is is that when you've got when you've got like Foggy so boxed in that he has no options, mm -hmm. there's a moment where he might go, "Hey, take off your jacket." <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's also the that's also the theme of this cuz that's where Daredevil is. Daredevil's like, "Nope, I'm going to find him. I'm going to end him." Done. Period. And Foggy and Karen are like, "No, that's not you." <laughs> You can't find him and in him. That makes you the bad guy. <laughs> and yeah, the problem is I'm in the background going, I'm in the background like drinking my hue going, no, nah, I'm with him. Go for it. And again, <laughs> that makes you the bad guy. Um, and don't get me wrong. I get it. I get the frustration yeah. because, yeah, Kingpin, you know, the, the thing about this in a narrative sense is you have to make your villain that effective. Yeah. Um, that way, if there is an Achilles heel... You got to make it a good Achilles heel. Then you have a compelling story. Most of the yeah. time that the place that made you jaded and most of us jaded is the bad guy is super, 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 super good. And then the good guy finds that the bad guy is super, 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 super good, except that he's stupid. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, the victory comes from plot convenience. 
Yeah, you rather know. than actually being being earned. So I promise you that is not how this season ends. Oh, good. Well, as <laughs> oh, long as, no. As long as, Deuce Ma- as long as he doesn't blow Field away or do Sex Machina or they just kind of like, oh, we got ourselves written in a corner, so we just kind of like, oh, look. And then the feds who aren't corrupt showed up and took him away. Oh, and no. And as no, they no, no, put no, him no. on the truck, the guy took off his, his handcuffs and said, We've been expecting you, Mr. Fisk. Your meal is waiting for you inside. You know. Oh no, 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 no. Like I said, you're you're gonna like how this ends. Yeah. But um, yeah. As far as like the stuff coming home to roost for Nadim, mm-hmm. he's decided to do the good. Th- he's finally decided to do the right thing, but it comes at a cost. He goes so, in. So th- there's a weird little aside that, that mm-hmm. we're late that resonates with me. That I don't know if people. I, I was binge watching Farscape while working on stuff for the Emporium because okay. I have to be. Something that won't distract me, I can listen, you know, white noise in the background, but right. entertaining enough to keep me keep me going. And uh, there's one episode where Crichton's faced with a decision. It's like, die mm-hmm. or get married. Well, <laughs> and everyone's like, dude, it's death or marriage. Get married. It's not I'm that thinking. hard. It's not that hard. And then, of course, Aaron Soon, because she loves him and won't admit it, is like telling him you can't marry her. And the other friends are like, look, Aaron, we all know you really want him. You're going to mess with his head. He's going to say no, and they're going to kill him. Leave him alone. Otherwise, he will die. And she's like, no, that's not what I'm doing at all. And then she does exactly that thing. Yeah, no, no. So that's kind of what I'm picturing was like, no, you can't you can't move against him because then you'll become the bad guy. And it's like, look, you're messing with his head. No, it's not a matter of moving <laughs> against him. The whole thing about Daredevil has mm-hmm. always been... We are going to take down the corrupt by way of the law. We are going to use the system. It looks like they've compromised every single bit of the system, but they haven't. The system has not failed. And, um, and that's, that's a really important, really important thing. Because, like, I had this talk with Rooney um, about the end of Daredevil Season 1. Because he's like, no, why did he go after him? Why did, why did he get uh, with the fist and all that stuff? And it's like, yeah, he locked Kingpin away by the law he got him in the court he was found guilty the thing was kingpin was about to be um um rescued and he was about to be set free and daredevil knew it (laughs) so he had to do the vigilante thing and rooney Mm. just could not wrap his mind around the idea he's like the writer should have just let it stay with the law and it's like no because if you can just arrest the criminal mastermind the criminal mastermind goes to jail you don't have a story yeah especially not with comics um yeah, so Nadim ends up, um, chickens come home to roost. Um, he essentially rescues his wife and kids because um, his wife and his, uh, you know, as soon as he, as soon as Kingpin finds out that, um, or not Kingpin, but as soon as Dexter found out that Nadim did not, um, that Nadim helped in getting Karen Page out of there, it was like, oh, Nadim did it. Okay. And so now it's time to kill his family. So that was how the last episode ended, which was a firefight in Agent Nadim's living room where he got saved by Daredevil. And then Daredevil's like, look, you saved Karen Page. I'm going to show you who I am <laughs> so you can trust me. Because Nadim is like, I don't trust you. I don't trust the FBI. I don't trust the cops. Kingpin's everywhere. I'm, everything is in my head. My family's in danger. Blah, 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 blah. And Daredevil's like, look, I'm that lawyer. I'm the one that put him in jail in the first place. And Nadim is like, all right, fine. I'm going to trust you. Um, how much do you weigh? Like, what do you mean? Oh, I just need to know how far I can throw you because that's all the trust you're getting. That's <laughs> it. You know, so they're setting him up in a safe house. Mm-hmm. And um, and again, once they get to the safe house, you know, go in and it's like, yeah, here are all the fresh eats you need. And the wife is like, oh, he's like, okay, honey, you okay? Don't, don't, don't you touch me. <laughs> like, no, no, we go. And, and, you know, you know, I got to love. I really got to love. How, you know, the the cop, I mean, the cop is cool. I got to say that because um, he's like, all right, we just set you up. We saved you from the firefight. But, yeah, he's got that look of like, oh, I should just go. I'll, I'll, I'll just, Awkward. yeah. Awkward. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know. I, yeah. I'm married. I'm married too. I I know that. I know that got that signal. It's time for me to leave and time for you not 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 to talk. Yeah, it, it pretty much came down. To, Here are your towels. I gotta go. Yep. I think I left a penguin on the stove or something. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and sure enough, Nadim gets the riot act from his wife, and she is right about every single thing. She's like, I married you not because of your looks, 
but because I knew you were a good man and you promised never to lie to me. And you've been lying to me for the past three, four weeks. And it culminated in a gunfight in our living room while our son was laying under me in the bathtub. <laughs> and all I could do was hope and pray that they shot him first so that he wouldn't have to watch me die. If you think you're not in the doghouse at this point, <laughs> There yeah. is no more house. There is a dog house with you in it and a vacant lot because we are done. <laughs> like we are finished. And um and all Yeah, these... <laughs> that 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 does a that the, the the gunfight in the living room does tend to put a strain on a relationship. Yeah, you know, you can say a That and remodeling. Yeah. Well, okay, remodeling is a to totally different kettle of fish. <laughs> you know, there was a pool that was going when you were remodeling. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> And he wasn't getting the pool. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And, um, but one, two, skip a few. It kind of works. They, um, you know, Foggy meets up with the district attorney and says, look, I got a dude. He's willing to testify against Fisk. He'll give you the whole kit and caboodle, including the FBI. Um, but here's the thing. My family got compromised by Kingpin and his people. So I'm dropping out of the district attorney race anyway so if you listen to my dude and you cut him a deal not only am i going to drop out which i'm already going to do but i will endorse you and i might even vote for you <laughs> <laughs> I might even vote for you yeah you know. oh wow well you want know foggy i'll do anything for a vote <laughs> you know and the district attorney is like i know you want an hour of my time but 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 what it, well, you know, I don't buy a book at the airport without reading the last page. I need to know what's going on. I don't do this cloak and dagger stuff. So Foggy tells him all that, and he's wait, like, wait, "I don't buy, I don't buy a book at the airport without reading the last page." Uh huh. But what kind of heresy is that crap? It's a lawyer that does not like surprises. <laughs> That's the whole thing. Wow, okay. I want to know how it ends before I start, just to make sure I'm not wasting my time. Type thing. I get that. It's one of the reasons that people can't spoil media for me. Um. But um, that kind of thing goes down because Kingpin's got Foggy's family against the wall and his brother might go to jail for freaking loan fraud based on what the Kingpin did to help them save the family butchery. So it's like, he's like, I'm up against the wall. I can't win on this one. But if we take Fist down, then everybody's good. I'll drop out of the race, all that other stuff. <laughs> Yeah, once again, never mess with a man who owns a, a butcher shop or a pig farm. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> However, things with Kingpin and Vanessa aren't well, exactly... Well, well. well it's, that it's, was, it's... I'm sorry, that, that just still you yeah. just put up there? That, that foreshadowed at, oh, things aren't going to go so well for him. He's going to say something wrong or she's going to be a little cold. And it's not going to be the perfect idealized reunion that he's been dreaming of all these cold lonely nights in his in his damp palatial palace when his <laughs> is suffering well that's exactly it the thing is she is being cold and she's like okay well that's cool and he's like would you like some champagne i figured you'll be the curator of the museum in the hotel because i own the hotel and and we're back together and things will be great and she's like eh, yeah 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 eh, eh, eh. and Later on in the episode, you're kind of going, all right, now hold up. What is what is the issue? What is going on, woman? Just say it. You know, and she's like, I'm lonely. You know, um, when, when various pieces of feces hit various oscillating blades, you got me out of there, but you kept me in the dark. I was alone in Spain. I was alone here. I was alone. I even feel alone now. You know, you don't let your people talk in front of me. <laughs> Every time someone would come up and talk to me, I'd never see them again. <laughs> my yeah. waiter, I, I smiled at my waiter once and he disappeared. And, um, and, she's, and he's like, well, uh, I was just trying to protect you from my world. And, I'm, and I, I, just, I never wanted you to get your hands dirty. And she's like, when I met you, you fascinated me. You were strong. You were this. And don't think that I didn't know who you were and what you did. And newsflash, my hands were never clean. And I'm going, oh, my God. Just, oh, my God. <laughs> like, oh. oh, sis, you got to lock that down. You got to lock that down right now. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, dear. 
they, that's like, you know, they're out, they're out to dinner, the car comes back, there's a scratch on the door, and she looks at the valet and goes, would you take off your jacket? <laughs> and Fisk is like, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, it, 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 it was very much a thing. But he actually falls out of favor with Dexter because Dexter couldn't <laughs> kill Karen Page. And he had that talk that... Uh, what needs to be done will be done, but not by you. I apologize for giving you more than you can handle. And I'm just oh, like... Oh, the, uh -huh. the I'm disappointed in you dad talk? No, even worse. Oh, I'm disappointed in myself. I yes. I put too much pressure on you. <laughs> yes. I expected too much. That's exactly oh, it. Oh, That's that exactly like, what he gave Dexter. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, he knows exactly what he's doing, too. That's, that's, <laughs> that is the sharper blade than if you just stabbed him in the eye. Yeah, exactly that. Because of his relationship you with know. Dexter as his father figure, as the only person. Mm -hmm. Dexter <laughs> exists for his approval, and he's denied it in the most polite way that Dexter can't even get, uh, uh, can't, uh, get angry about without being the bad guy. Yeah, exactly. Ex oh. That's exactly it. Just, I'm, I'm sorry for giving you more than you can handle. I was yeah. mistaken. And, and putting too much pressure on you. I'm like, dude. So Dexter is now on a quest. I'm going to make daddy love me again. And um, Why don't and, you love me? And, and it's like, what? Well, look, I, 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 I give you your food. I give you clothes. I put a roof over your head. But ain't it said nowhere in any scripture or any law that I'm supposed to like you. <laughs> but um, but in, in the last episode, what? Well, fences was awesome, dude. <laughs> um yeah, but fence, and again, that a that, uh, little peek into my home life um, growing up. But in the last episode, um, we covered that Fish tried to get the painting that he bought from Vanessa in the beginning back. But again, the woman who owned it was from a family of Holocaust survivors, and the German government took it. And she pretty much stared him down, saying, I know who you are, I know what you do, and you're nothing but a Nazi coming to take my father's stuff. So no, you can't have it back. Well... It means a lot to us, and it's the foundation of our relationship. Oh, so you know, so you know what it's like to lose something that's important to you and your family. Get out of my house! <laughs> and, of course, as I said in the last episode last week, Kingpin handled it so much grace. He's like, Vanessa would have wanted you to have this. I'm sorry for your time. And she's like, what? Do you think I care if Vanessa would have had... It? You think that matters to me? And Kingpin's like, no, it matters to me. Right, I'm like, right, we'll play. I'm like, okay, all right. Uh, I'm cool. sorry, I'm just picturing in mind that uh, that college humor thing where they have the uh, the uh, Avengers versus Magneto. Magneto's like, oh look, another metal guy. They're like, well, we have Hulk. He's super powered. He doesn't have metal. Oh good. So the Hulk is going to hit a 75 year old survivor of a concentration <laughs> camp. Um, Hulk not comfortable with this. <laughs> exactly. Hulk leave now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, Even Fisk is like, look. I cross lines. I'm evil. I'm okay <laughs> with that. But you know, even I'm like, I'm not going there. Well, it, it was half that, but it was also the other half of the only way I'm getting this from this woman is to kill, kill her. her. And I just put my reputation back together. I'm finally off of house arrest. So if I go and see this 70-something-year-old Holocaust survivor and she turns out dead for a painting, that'll just look bad all the way around. Vanessa wouldn't like it. Besides, I can wait Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. Um, so of course he basically puts a he basically puts an anonymous bid to each one of her each <laughs> one of her low life grandchildren. So when grandma passes, they're like, "Huh? Well, grandma passed, and there's this letter attached to the will that says if we sign the painting over now, we'll get a million dollars, sight unseen." <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. But um, <laughs> but again. Dexter is like, no, I'm going to make daddy love me. So he gives the, he gets the painting back and he tells Vanessa, he's like, you know, oh. here you go. I know it meant everything to you and all that oh. other jazz. And just think of me as the new Owen. Huh? Huh? <laughs> oh, I bet that went over well. It's a grand gesture. It shows how much I get. You are a complete sociopath who doesn't understand how wrong this is. Well, honestly, it's it's a thing. Um, <clears throat> the interesting part was <clears throat> with Vanessa, like seeing all that stuff, she actually looked at the painting and she's like, yes, it is the painting. It means so much to us. Hmm. Couple of drops of blood in the lower left corner. That'll be all, Mr. Poindexter. And at that point in the show, you're just kind of going... Hmm, 
well, you know what? She does no fisk and all that stuff. But then they, they have the cold breakfast, and that's where she was like, my hands were never clean, and I feel alone. I don't, like, I feel like I'm watching your world, but I'm not part of your world. I want to be part of your world part with of you. Your world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and she's I like. I want to be where the people are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So sure enough, she makes it very clear, like, look, I've always known what you were about. Evidently, you didn't know me that well, but I have been all in from day one. And he's like, oh, you're all in from, d- you, you're really all in. All right, when well, you know, you mean everything to me like you're the only thing in my life that um that matters like you really are it so come on let me take you to my secret base you know and um (laughs) yeah and and she's like okay i'll do the secret base thing with you that's fine you know but (coughs) here here was the number one thing um Back to Agent Nadim. Mm-hmm. Um, Agent Nadim cuts the deal with the district attorney, decides to testify, goes in and testifies in court. They kept him safe. Everything is cool. He answered all the questions. Everything is great. And, and like Foggy and Karen are like, all right, this is good. We're doing a thing. And Matt's like, don't say it. He's like, what do you mean? It just feels good. At Don't say it. But we took him down. To... Don't say it. Like, don't, don't you jinx this. We will celebrate when Fisk is actually in a cell. Because <laughs> Matt is more cynical than we have seen him over the course of Daredevil Season 1, Season 2, The Defenders. <laughs> like, this is, you know, he got cocky one time, and that let Kingpin know who he was. Well, in my mind, <laughs> I'm picturing his, his virtual Fisk buddy in his head leaving over and going, yes, that judge, he has a, dr- he has a drinking problem. <laughs> I took care of it. The bailiff, he owes money. I took care of it. <laughs> the stenographer, student loans. I took care of it. Well, you know, it's <laughs> funny you mention that because since Matt has the super hearing thing, he starts hearing the jury. And the foreman gets up and starts naming everyone in the jury and where they live. Hmm. And Matt's like, no, 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 no. I told you, I told you, yes, everybody on lockdown. I gotta go kill this dude. I'm done. I'm finished. <laughs> and um, Foggy is like, no, nah, man, no, nah, no, nah, you don't kill him. We'll just find a jury that he can't get to. No. Yeah. <laughs> and Nadim is like, wait, I know you're Daredevil. I know you heard the whole thing. What did you just hear? And Daredevil's like, he. He compromised the jury, and he's like, son of a... Okay, all right, that's cool. And Falky's like, look, it's just a setback. The system still works. We'll, we'll just keep doing it until we find a jury that can't be compromised and all that stuff. And then Nadim, Nadim does what any person in their right mind would do. What? What would you do? Don't ask me do? what I would do. No, no, really, I'm asking, what would you do? I, I would excuse myself mm-hmm. and go hunting. Okay. Well, Nadim um, says... He can't um, predict your moves if you're crazy. <laughs> well, <laughs> Bull. We've been watching how he has been manipulating Bullseye for the entire show. He can predict your moves, especially if you're crazy. Again, I'm sorry. I gave you more than you could handle. I, I made a mistake. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> he asked Foggy a question. Hey, Foggy, real quick, um, what did the five knuckles say to the face? What? Bam! Done! And he goes home, knowing that the FBI is watching his house, there are cameras on the house, and Fisk is tapped in. So he goes home, he looks at the camera, and he walks around, and he starts essentially making a video saying that he's sorry to his wife. And he's walking around his house. Now, this is an interesting thing, because, um... I am going to, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pull this up and, um, yeah, the only, the only way I, and again, why am I jumping around? Because it all ties together, especially for the last few shots of the show. So I'm going to show this scene, um, here on Twitch. Um, but of course when it goes up on, on YouTube, I got to edit it and all that stuff, but we're just going to take a look at this scene. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at this. And, oh, boy. Uh, yeah. So, 
Uh, yeah, like the, old, I said, the old thing, like, never take everything away from a good man. Um, yeah, well, the whole thing is, um, you know, Vanessa made it very clear. Like, my hands were never clean. I want to be all in. I want to be part of your world and all that jazz. And um, he's like, fine, I'll take you to my secret hideout. Okay, honey, it, it's one of those things. And so they get to the secret hideout. Oh, so You're she gets watching. to see the video. Mm. Everyone yeah. I need to. Everyone I need to. Yeah, and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, everyone. Like, you, you've been watching everybody? Oh, yeah, yeah, everybody I need to watch. Hmm. 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 Now, it's interesting to me because she looks a lot like my mentor's wife and scares me An just update, as much. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I'm going to say on that. Speak freely. And it's like, speak freely. I'm never going to hide anything from her again. Keep anything from Vanessa. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, sir. Well, hey, what's going oh, on? Yeah. She's in. Has been and she's just like, hmm. His testimony hmm. To the grand jury and of course, we see the black and white screen of Agent Nadine going, hey, madam, here. What's up? Given it's public nature. Thank you. Yes, given the public the nature, we should weigh the benefits alive. of keeping them alive. Was the idea to stand trial for the murder of Agent Wynn. You know. Turning the FBI against him and discrediting him in the press. It's like, turn the FBI against him and discredit him in the my press? Exactly, <clears throat> you know, it's like, my thoughts exactly, sir. And the way he's looking at the camera, like, what he knows. He knows. Mean? Like, he can hear them. And she's yes. like, what does he know about your business, honey? Considerable, Considerable amount. And is he determined to find and ways is he to determined hurt to find a way to hurt you? To hurt us? To hurt us? Yes. Yeah. Like that was a very observant don't cool question. Don't you think it would be safer to remove the threat? Are, are you? Yes, I do. Yes, yeah. I do. But like, like you're two oh, minutes in. It's better. If Agent Poindexter, if Agent Poindexter is, useful, is useful, perhaps, perhaps he could help us with help this, us problem? this problem. Hmm. Well, I. You let him know, won't you? You let him know, won't yes, you, Felix? Yes, ma'am. He's like, wow, she yeah, is... Just take a look right there. Yeah, he's that just like, is the look of he, a man that is going to lock it down. <laughs> he's like, her. I am marrying this woman. <laughs> he's like, oh my God. Oh, oh, I don't know if I'm frightened or otherwise stimulated. Um, a little bit of both. <laughs> Yeah, like, j j <laughs> like yeah. Oh, yeah. God, what was that? What was that vampire movie where mm. uh, Razorblade was it? Razorblade Smile? Mm, maybe. I think I it's, it was an old vampire movie. I don't know what 80s. you're talking about, man. Oh, you, oh God! <laughs> well, you were it, va crazed vampire hunting, terrorizing this innocent young woman, killing everyone around her, doing this crazed supernatural solo serial killer thing, and finally at the end he catches her and he gets her, and she's like. Oh baby, that was so hot, and you that find out that was razor blade smile. Yeah, and they find nothing out nothing but a game. Yeah, yeah and you find out game. they they're immortal and you they know. get really bored, and they do this every now and then, and it's yeah. just like you're like, oh my god. Yeah, so he's found <laughs> villains. His, yeah, villains. <laughs> villains that they're they're really or, really bad people. Know, honey, let's send the henchmen <laughs> out to handle this. I want to stay in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. And he's like, oh, oh yeah, you know. So, so yeah, yeah. Fisk, lock that down. So, in a nutshell. Um, they send Poindexter out, to, or sorry, Agent Dexter, um, to go do it, and he meets Nadim in the backyard, and he's like, "Come on, you're gonna come with me." And Nadim is like, "One, I'm glad it was you, and two, if you're gonna do it, <clears throat> if you're gonna do it, just do it. Do it here. It's fine. Just, just do it here." And he's like, "Well, I'm not gonna, you know, all this other stuff." He's like, "Dude," and he pulls out his gun. Poindexter shoots him, and he falls into the open grave that he dug himself. <laughs> so Nadim is done. Wow. Yeah, no more Nadim. Um, yeah, and um, and sure enough, I, I yeah. Honestly, if I knew I was going out, if being in the Marvel universe, I would want to mess with their head and give them some sort of look. We got aliens. We got we got <laughs> Norse gods. You don't think you know? We got a guy who's like a thousand years old and reincarnated. We got all these crazy superheroes. You think I'm not coming back as an as a vengeful ghost? I'm going to be messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and Nadim's death is pretty much how the episode ends, which brings us into the finale. Okay. As soon as Foggy and Karen found out that Nadim is dead, Matt was like, all right, try it your way. I'm out. Gone. <laughs> and um, Seems reasonable. Yeah. At, at this point, Matt's like, nope, nope. There's no other. Matt, no, no, no. Nope. Nope. So um, the next episode opens with Matt beating down Felix, the dude that Vanessa was just talking to. 
and he essentially pulls a Batman, drops him off a thing, and he squeals like a pig. He's like, everybody did, did it, did it, the demon, the whole thing, it's been friend, the thing, and I got the gun with the deep fingerprint on it, and then, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then she ordered to hit on him and all that stuff, and I'll testify, just don't drop me off the roof. And Matt's like, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Um, and Kingpin um, puts on a Beyonce album and does exactly that. He puts a ring on that quick, and that's his entire story arc for this episode, <laughs> is The Wedding. Okay, because he's like, oh my god, I fell in love with the right woman, so I'm putting a ring on it, and we're having a wedding, and it'll be public, and, and people will think differently of us, and all that stuff. And he invites all the mob bosses to the wedding. It's very <laughs> humanizing. He found love. Yeah. He is Vic. Have you, me have you met her? What? Go talk to the bride. Oh my god, that is the scariest one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> what are we getting? So, exactly. So, if we get him a wedding gift, I'm going out and buying two more right now. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, yeah. And sure enough, you know, even Karen at this point is like, You, you know okay. who she reminds me of? She reminds hmm. me of the, uh, the, the noble wife from uh, Witches Abroad. Yeah, when kind of. Wax take, what? Yeah. He took away. I, I'm just taking away the barriers in her mind and let her see what kind of person she really is. And she's what? like, what? You think I didn't come to terms with who I was a long time ago? My only regret is that I didn't do it harder and more painfully. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, exactly. Dude. Even Weatherwax is like, I did not see that coming. <laughs> you know, kind of like um, my favorite villain in all of Shakespeare being Aaron from Titus Andronicus, mm -hmm. who says exactly that. That whole, you know, all these bad things I've done. Um, the only thing that I regret was that I don't get to live to do 10,000 more. Like, I, 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 I hate you people. I hate all of you people. You know, even when he was finally sentenced to death and buried up to his neck, he's like, oh, so now is the time I repent? Fine. If any a good deed I have ever done, I repent it from my very soul. I'm like... Okay, yeah, you're just bad. You're, yeah. you're just, you're that, that just is, terrible. That is, some, that is, yeah, that's angry all the way down. <laughs> oh, yeah, all the way down, all the way down. But, um, but yeah, so at this point, even Karen, Karen is like, no, I'm kind of with Matt at this point. You know, we just got to kill him. And Foggy is like, no, 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 that is not the way we do the thing. And then Foggy gets a phone call from the FBI. Hey, can we uh, talk to you for a minute? <laughs> And Karen is like, I know you're not going down there. He's like, one, I'm an officer of the court. Two, I'm already compromised. <laughs> and three, he wants you dead. But I'm not going to let him run everything. So um, so again, um, Foggy heads into the FBI's office, meets directly with Agent Poindexter. And he's like, hey, Poindexter, hey, you just won me 50 bucks because most of the guys didn't think you'd show up. And he's like, I'm always happy to help. The FBI. Oh, speaking of which, um, yeah, let me just, let me get a selfie with you that's going directly to my campaign website where I've got the backing of the NYPD. So why did you call? <laughs> and, um... <laughs> Point is, just like, I am not amused. I'm not amused by anything. And I, I, as I'm watching this, am going, well, Foggy well, is awesome. He just, it, yeah. if anybody makes you believe that the system works, it's that dude. Yeah. It's that dude. And I know you keep saying, everyone's like, don't do it. Don't be that guy. Uh, I did I did finally, finally after like two years of wanting to, because you talk about dropping shows and not picking back up again, mm -hmm. I caught up on The Expanse. Okay. And there's a scene in The Expanse where they've got their, we kept calling him Jane, because that's what he was. He was Jane from Firefly. He was, okay. you know, he, he's, he's, he's a sociopath and he knows it, but he tries to be the right thing. He fails. And there's a scene where the daughter who's, the, sorry, the guy whose daughter was kidnapped and being experimented on and about to be turned into a psychotic killing machine by mm -hmm. a good doctor. He has a good doctor in the airlock and is about to kill him for his crimes. And the guy comes in and goes, no, don't do it. You're not that guy. Pushes the gun down and says, I am. Like, <laughs> like and, and sends him away. Mm -hmm. And then the good doctor's like, oh, thank you, thank you. You know I never would have hurt her. And the guy's like, don't, don't, don't waste your breath. I am that guy. And then just... Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly and that's it. And that's kind of like, I'm kind of like, I, in my mind, in the back of my mind, that's that's kind of where, where I'm seeing it. It's like, you know, you're right, Daredevil, you can't do that. It will ruin who you are. You are the good guy who fights within the system. That's why we have these guys over here. <laughs> <laughs> and people say that I got a dark turn of mind. So, of course, he goes, now, why is he at the FBI, you might be asking. Well, a um, couple other things happened last episode. Karen went public with everything that she knew. 
in a press conference. So now Fisk is all on damage control. He's like, okay, this reporter uh, is saying that I was out to kill her and all this other stuff. And it's just like, oh man, this the, like none of this stuff is good. And Fisk, of course, is wiggling out from under it because he's got all that reach. And we're going, you know what? Kingpin is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So Karen is like, all right. So they've convicted Nadim in the court of public opinion. They're calling me a liar. Um, Fisk is getting married publicly and everybody's happy and he's out of jail. And then Foggy gets that call. Come on down to the FBI. <laughs> and, um, I want to talk to you about your parents' loan. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. That's what that's what he thinks. Yeah. He gets down to the FBI, and he talks with Poindexter, and Dexter's like, "Don't worry, you're, dude. Nobody's gonna hurt you here. Besides, you know, um, we're rooting for you. We're gonna need you when you win as district attorney." And Foggy, uh, of course, is going, "All right, cool. So why am I here?" Takes him into a room. And there's Nadim's wife, having found the dead body, is like, I can't believe my husband did all this stuff, and I'm just here to help the FBI to try and put stuff away and make sure that, you know, all this other stuff. And Dexter's like, yeah, because Nadim might have been bad, but you're still FBI family. We got you, and we're going to be keeping an eye on you and to make sure that you're taken care of and you and your son and all that stuff and she's like i just can't believe that my husband was such a monster blah 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 so nadim is like <clears throat> and <clears throat> mrs nadim is like i'm calling you i had them call you foggy because you were his lawyer and you did all that stuff and i'm gonna need help because i don't know about the life insurance policy and all this other stuff and dexter's like i'll give you guys the room because she's in line <laughs> And of course, she's like, yeah, so, I mean, there's all this other stuff. And she's writing on a pad while talking to him. And it's like, I didn't want to believe it, but yeah, they're listening. But I can't, I mean, just my husband is just so terrible. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry that you've gone through everything. It must have been an incredible shock. Oh, my God, it was. It was so terrible and all that other stuff. But, yeah, all that other stuff. But, you know, I'm trying to save my son. And, <laughs> and yeah, yeah. And sure enough, she got the video. She found his phone. <clears throat> and so it's like, now there's the phone. And this guy was smart enough to use a very legal loophole, which was, he's like, I'm sorry I lied, honey. I'm sorry I ruined our life, blah, blah, blah. Look, son, Sammy, your name means something noble and something great. And now you got to take care of your mom because you did so much good for me and you made my life better in so many ways and all that other stuff. And now, <clears throat> um, if you're going to keep watching this, I need you to send, send, the son, send our son away. All right. So being of sound mind and sound body, I'm testifying under oath of perjury of blah, 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 blah. And he spills everything because he knows he's going to die. Mm. So he, he doesn't just drop dime. Okay, he literally takes a bag full of dimes to the phone booth and just calls pretty much everybody. He puts on this, he puts on this tape everything, every way that he got compromised, every person that got compromised, and he he even topped it off with, and I personally drove Agent Ben Poindexter to the church the night that Daredevil killed the priest. It wasn't Daredevil. Dexter was wearing the suit. He was riding shotgun. I dropped him off. He went into the church dressed as Daredevil, killed a bunch of people, came back out, and I drove him away. And my boss is involved. My supervisor is involved. These are all the people <laughs> that also were involved. These are the freaking police department people that are involved. These are the freaking jurors these are the, this is everything i know and according to law and i and i did look this up i just forgot the name of the law that is submissible testimony in court if you believe that you are dying if you don't think that you are going to live through the day mm -hmm. and you give a confession like that it is it counts as legal testimony <laughs> so Nadim set himself up to be killed by Poindexter as a final giant middle finger, <laughs> like a moon person, going, I'm doing this as hard as I can from the afterlife. <laughs> and Foggy's like, dude, we got him. Like, this this is what we need. This is what, yeah, cool, we got him. Like, because Karen's like, man, too bad he can't, you know, too bad this isn't submissible in court. And Foggy's like, it is. Because he thought he was, you know, all that yeah. stuff. So... 
he can turn that into the district attorney and to the judge and get Fisk and everybody else on everything, at least get the indictment started. And Karen's like, this is great. And I still got the press connection so I can run this in the papers <laughs> and all that other stuff to go through that. But we got to find Matt because if we do all this stuff and Matt kills Fisk, it's not going to be for nothing, <laughs> you know, and that raises the question. What is going on with picture, Matt? Picture me dressed <laughs> as Willy Wonka going, wait, <laughs> stop, <laughs> don't, <laughs> you know, well, <clears throat> sure enough, um, that's okay. When Fisk yeah. is in jail. His wife will run his empire in the means and manner that he would be proud of. <laughs> well, um, Matt calls Poindexter from the phone of Fisk's other dude. And he's like, why are you calling me? And he's like, oh, yeah, no, nah, I bet you're wondering why you got this. So we got to talk. And he just plays him. He's like, yeah, you know, all the stuff that you did. How would the girl from the suicide hotline? feel about knowing you killed all those people and the fact that you killed a priest like isn't she the one that wanted all these good things for you what would happen if she found out all of the things that you've become and everything you're doing for fist just poking the bear he's just poking poking the bear <clears throat> and he's like look you don't talk he's like dude i want my suit back <laughs> i want my suit i want to put an end to this and dexter's like i got some free time now what's up what's what's up you know me <laughs> you know me get out the car pull over pull over hey we'll do this right now and Matt's like, you know, we will do that. But if you got some time, why don't you just check out this address? Huh? Yeah. Because all this other stuff. And Julie would probably think you're a monster. And Julie would be sad to find out what you've become, especially after all that stuff you did to get back into Julie's good graces. Haven't you noticed you haven't talked to Julie for a while? And he's like, stop saying her name. Stop saying her name, Martha. And this was how to do it right, boys and girls. And, um... And he's like, yeah, uh, you know, so if you got that time, go out and check out this address. And so Dexter goes out and checks out the address that night, and he sees all the people that Fisk had killed in order to court him. Wait, Fisk kept the bodies on ice? Mm-hmm. That was a tactical error. Uh, not really. You keep the bodies on ice in case you got to pull them out for something later on. Like, um... If Dex started falling out of line or started believing Daredevil and stuff, you th you you defrost suddenly, the suddenly body. The, yeah, suddenly the body of the person he kills suddenly turns up. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's a simple thing, just like they kept the gun that his boss used to shoot the internal affairs guy. I don't know. I think Fisk may have a hoarding problem. He just needs to ask himself, does this corpse bring me joy? Stop. <laughs> just stop. <laughs> so... So yeah, so um, one, two, skip a few, um, you know, yeah, so one, two, skip a few. Let me guess, um, he yeah. finds Julie. Oh, man. <laughs> Pretty much, he has, well, his barbaric officer, <laughs> and as soon as Daredevil hears that, phone rings, and he's like, ah, so you found her, and he's like, you, I'm gonna, do he's like, dude, you know Fist did this. He did this to make sure that he was your North Star. What would your therapist, the one that you grew up, because, you know, the phone call was like, so how did it feel killing those birdies? You know, the ones you killed with rocks? Wasn't the same the second time, third time, fourth time. He's like, dude, I know you. <laughs> I know you. I know your history. Your shrink would be disappointed in you. The girl that you looked at as the moral center would be disappointed in you because you got played by Wilson Fisk. You got played. Matter of fact, reach into your underwear because you'll be pulling a quarter out of your butt because you got played, son. You got played. <laughs> and, um, you know. So, yeah. That's an interesting turn of phrase, but okay. <laughs> hey, you know. Yeah, seriously. And, um, you know, because, yeah, sure enough, he pulled, you know, he reached into his things and he pulled out a quarter with Fisk's head on it. And it's like, yep, Fisk played you, boy. Fisk played you. And um, so he does what any reasonable human being would do. Which is interesting, because he's not a reasonable human being. He's a sociopath. No, he's a psychopath. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, but yeah, he does what any reasonable person would do, which is puts on the Daredevil costume. Wait, damn it, I wanted that costume back. <laughs> yeah, well, he puts on the Daredevil costume. He grabs the body of his girl. And he crashes Fisk sweating. Wah, wah. With the body. And sure enough, oh. uh, 
Let's I see uh, take a quick point look. Dexter, you brought me here. You should have wrapped it. And it's like, what the? Hey there, Lem. How you doing, buddy? It's like, ain't you Dex? What's up? He's, He's one, one of the good ones, honey. You can just chill. I know, I know, I know. Come back, come back. I know, I know. I should. Oh God, that was. I, I feel bad. Okay. I feel bad. All right. I should have uh, uh, just. Hey, said that was time. actually really cool, Dex. He's <laughs> one of the good ones. Walk away. I'm letting you walk away. And he's like, and I'm also showing you quite, quite eloquently, just how beyond crazy I am. <laughs> yeah. And so, sure enough, the big confrontation between Dex and Daredevil happens at the wedding. Um, yeah, Dex and Daredevil, they do their thing because Dex is there to kill the crap out of Kingpin in front of everybody. That whole, you played me and I thought you were my dad. And yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the weird thing is there though, that you just, you, you see what Matt did there. I have to kill Kingpin, what did you do? Well, for starters, I set Dex against him because mm -hmm. you know I was I suspected that he was playing Dex all along and sure enough he was oh look yeah um, uh, and if that doesn't work well then we'll move in I'm sorry what was it was it Batman who said I don't have to de kill you I just have to not save you yeah <laughs> and that is villainous I'm sorry you have to save them or else you're not the hero um, so yeah and the interesting thing was of course Vanessa shines at that again because worst wedding since wings i mean it was just it was hard all the way across the board because all the mob people are there and they're doing the whole thing and the wedding happens and they both say i do and during the first dance with the bride and groom the deems video pops up on everybody's cell phone and news feed so they're watching they're watching the couple dance and all that stuff and then the testimony comes up huh i wonder who did that hmm? karen <laughs> Karen did that all the way across the board. Fisk, I got you a wedding present. Yeah, essentially. I hope it's and, in your size because you can't take it back. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and it was interesting because when that happened, um, Vanessa was the coolest head in the room because everyone else is watching, you know. And um, here we go. Yeah, pulling this up. And of course, it's like, yes, the bride and the groom's wedding thing. So let's take a look. And it's like, da 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 da, da 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 da. Vincent D'Onofrio looking baller in the suit. He's like, yeah, I started off as pile, but look at me now. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, look, I'm going to record the whole thing. Look at the dance. And then, boom, there we go. It's, it's, you know, you were, and it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, I can't wait for the. For the next part and it was like yeah uh, announcement and then boom and it's like hey we're dancing and 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 hey what is what what is, Why is no one paying attention to us anymore yeah and again where, where are my subtitles here my subtitle should be uh yeah subtract oh no wonder yeah there we go you know and she's like you know you will some fiscal coerce me and he did all this stuff and she's just like Keep dancing. It's cool. You know what? <laughs> yeah, keep dancing. It's cool. Let them know it don't bother you. I mean, the next one's a favorite. Grab your dance partner and head to the floor. And the other and the other mob bosses are leaving. And she's like, you'll handle it. And he's like, but I you know, like you handle everything. Show them that none of it matters. None of it matters. And I'm just like, who are you? Like, I know your name is Vanessa, but is your last name Macbeth? I'm just checking. Because, <laughs> you know, she seems like she's a few generations past caring about bloodstains. Because she's just like, no, you got this. You got this, baby. Yeah. And you show them that you got this. Now keep dancing. Keep yeah. dancing. Don't, don't <laughs> let them see you sweat. Don't let them see you weak. Mm -hmm. Oh, look. They're destroying your empire. This is just a minor inconvenience. And if you thought that that was my empire, you have no idea where my vulnerable targets are. You know. <laughs> um, oh, Destro, they've destroyed your jungle base. Uh, I hated the heat anyway. Don't we have something, something in, in the Arctic? <laughs> mm-hmm. And see, that that is an interesting thing. So, you know. So then the big fights happen. Um... And the people get hurt and all that stuff, but it then gets taken to the honeymoon suite. And sure enough, boop, 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 um, it turns out 
Fisk and Matt versus Bullseye, because Bullseye is there to kill them all. <laughs> Okay, Dexter is there to kill Kingpin, kill Vanessa, kill, kill Matt, you know, kill the fish. So um, pretty much he's just shorted out and go kill everybody, worry about it later. Yep. And so... Well, let's see. The, uh, the one thing that kept me from becoming a complete psychotic killing machine was mm -hmm. is on literally a, a, uh, a fish stick now. So hmm, I'm just going to kill everybody and sort it out later. Yeah, pretty much. And Dex is doing everything he does as Bullseye, which is mm -hmm. great, but... That's when we find out that Fisk's tuxedo is made from the same stuff that deflects sharp objects. So he can't get the throwing thing on him because they won't stick to him. And then Fisk does exactly what Fisk would do, which is he took off the jacket that deflected knives and put it on Vanessa. <laughs> and he's like, you get upstairs, you get all this stuff. And she's like, oh, okay. And he's like, I'll meet you downstairs. And then the big fight happens. Because, um, yeah, Daredevil and Bullseye, they are going at it. They are just going just hammer at it. Hammer and tongs. And, yeah, just, just hammer and tongs. Hammer and tongs. And, um, and Kingpin, well, remember, Fisk is no slouch in a fight. He is no slouch in a fight whatsoever. And, um, and so now that Vanessa's safe, Fisk does what Wilson Fisk does. Just wades in and just... Well, starts remember, breaking things. at 11 years old, he beat his dad to death with a hammer. Yeah. So, let's see what we got here. You know. And we got Daredevil and Daredevil taking the thing. And Matt is still wearing the Muay Thai ropes. And Fisk is like, ow. Should have got the vest made of that deflective stuff. And Vanessa's like, oh, God, no, I have to do all that stuff. It's like, oh, you. <laughs> well, I'm going to hurt you. And Daredevil's like, no, leave her out of this. And, and that's when Fisk picks him up. Ooh! Ooh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... So let me get this straight. over. <laughs> he hit Dexter with the building. <laughs> <laughs> and chipped the building on his spine in the process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might you might need a you might need to take a moment there. We'll pause while you catch your breath. Yeah, yeah. And and now that Dex is out of the way, it's now time for the confrontation that we were talking about. You know. And sure enough, you know, during the confrontation, um <laughs> you know, <clears throat> remember, we know what Daredevil's been up to. Um and you know, all that good stuff. And then they have the great confrontation, which is, all right, I just killed the dude. And Daredevil's like, okay, all right. So, so yeah, you just took out Dexter. Yeah, you ready for this? I've been waiting for this for a while. All right, you son of a bro. I like how the, like the subtitles are just both yelling. Yeah, both <laughs> yelling. And, yeah, so sure enough, you know, they're fighting and... You know, but Matt is done. Matt is like, I'm I, going there to There was a little weirdness in that fight where Matt kind of like the actor mm -hmm. kindly blindly reaches out and reaches for Fisk's leg. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that was choreographed or that was the actor like, I can't really see worth a damn in this outfit. And I got to know <laughs> where the other actor is so I don't accidentally punch him in the face. Right. And again, Daredevil just goes, oh, done, 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 done. <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to. You, I want to snap your, I want to snap your neck so hard. I, yeah, ah! <laughs> and again, that primal scream thing that I was talking about earlier. That whole, I just, whoa, <laughs> you know. And Kingpin again does what Kingpin does. He's like, dude, I'll never stop going after Karen Page or Foggy Nelson. You, you're gonna have to do it. You're gonna have to kill me. Do it. Do it. Kill me. I'll tell the world who you really are. I'll never stop hunting your friends. And even Vanessa's like, Wilson. And she's like, no, no, no. You don't, you don't get to do that. It's like, you, you, you want me to kill you. <laughs> I mean, no prison can keep me. You know that. You know it. You know it. Kill me. Kill me. No. No. No, 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 no. No. And he has the really good monologue. Right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, God knows I want to be. You don't get to destroy who I am. Yeah. That that you don't. Yeah. You don't get to destroy who I am. You don't get my soul. Um, I'm gonna stay the good guy as much as I want to kill you so bad, <laughs> so bad. Just thinking about it is making my mouth water. But 
Let's see where this let's see where this plays out. You will go back to prison. Yeah. And you will live the rest of your miserable life in a cage, knowing <laughs> you'll never have the <laughs> But this city rejected you. you. It this city you. it beat you. I'll I beat you. <laughs> Look at me in my wandering eyes. And he's like, you'll keep my secret. And you won't harm Damn page and, you won't, and you ain't gonna do nothing. Else. You're just gonna I sit in your cell, because if you do, I'm going after her. And I will prove And I will prove that she ordered, ordered the murder Agent of Agent Nadine. Nadine. And like I know husband, she gave the order. She'll <laughs> the rest of her life and then she'll spend the rest of her life in a cell. And you'll spend the rest of your life in a cell. And I'm going to bed. I failed you. I failed you. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Like you said, like you said, they made him too good. They did all that stuff. Yeah. But again, as soon as Daredevil found out he had that she ordered the hit on Nadine, and he's got somebody that can testify and he mm. can prove it, that was his leverage. Yeah. He, he found he found he found the point where he could put leverage on this and use his own tactics against him yeah that there is one human being out there that he cared about more than himself exactly and so and, again it wasn't do sex machina it was good 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 writing and the funny thing is i was kind of thinking about i was kind of thinking along as well as that fight's going because I, I haven't seen this episode and, and him going like do you see her up there she is so turned on she's about <laughs> to give you the best love making of your entire life Remember, and you're never gonna, <laughs> you're never gonna get it <laughs> it's okay they're married <laughs> Still, nah, nah. But so yeah, and that's when they take Fisk in, and then uh, uh, again. So, and I'm totally yeah. picturing like the response to Vanessa is, "Don't worry, Fisk. You'll beat this. You always do. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure everything is war is running smoothly while you're gone." It's practically what happened. And he's it's like, "Oh God, I love that woman." <laughs> <laughs> You can almost see like that breaking of the fourth wall of Vincent D'Onofrio going, if you like it, then you'd better put a ring on it. Yep. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so all in all, I decided to do both of these mm -hmm. in one show because um, really had it ran, um, had it been running like the old shows back from when we were kids on a mm -hmm. weekly basis, it really would have been a part one and part two yeah. finale, as you can see. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Fizz goes to jail. Foggy is like, okay, cool, and, you know, then they do the cleanup, and everybody is good, and the show actually ends really well, really well. Um, so, all in all, I gotta say, the last two episodes, um, the last two episodes of this, especially as far as the season goes, um, get a solid flush. They get a solid flush. I mean, mm -hmm. look, yeah, look at that right there. I mean, a mm -hmm. solid flush. Oh, <laughs> right there. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, I, it's a solid flush episode. Um, because, again, there were consequences for everything. Nobody got away clean. Um, <clears throat> with the whole season, you saw everybody had reasons for doing everything that they did. From Matt, um, Matt isolating himself karen and foggy going when you isolate yourself you do stupid stuff yeah and um so that that was all just really good all the way across the board um and matt's last ditch change of heart of not killing him as soon as he found the leverage um of vanessa as soon as he found that leverage he's like all I needed was a reason not to kill you. <laughs> That's all. And Kingpin's like, no, kill me. Call it a day. Because he knows that if he... Because yeah, mm -hmm. he knows that. He's like... Yeah. yeah, if you kill me, I still win. And he's like, no, yeah. you will not win. I don't care if I end up living in an alley for the rest of my life. You will not win. <laughs> you know? I've known since I was 11 years old, I was going to die badly. <laughs> it's only a matter of when. <laughs> And who, and who? <laughs> you know, and at least this way I get to choose the moment. Yeah, exactly. And Matt's like, no, you don't. Nah. No, you don't. Nope, nope. And if you think you're coming after my friends, you come after my friends, I go after your wife. What? What? <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, cool. So, yeah, they agree. Check. To, 
Mm -hmm. and mate. Yeah, so they agree to open mm -hmm. up the law firm again, bringing in Karen Page as an investigator. They even do a little nod to Jessica Jones with the, you're a really good investigator and you're way more stable than Jessica Jones. So, <laughs> there you go on that. Yeah, you think? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, yeah, way more? I mean, uh, but yeah, so all I would all say slightly good. less murdery, but no, no, <laughs> nope. Actually, no, she is, she is, because Jess is rather murdery. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that that took a little while, but that's okay. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, so again, got to give the thing a total flush, a flush. Um, the season as a whole, um, as a whole for the season, I will say that this was the best season of Daredevil yet i mean best uh, or the best season overall of daredevil season one was good season one was good season two i couldn't do the night of a million billion ninjas it was just so boring <laughs> um it really was it really was it was just like okay you don't look at anything like a hedge <laughs> well you know it was a bunch of undead ninjas along with daredevil's crazy ex-girlfriend and his mentor and they're trying to save the city and all that stuff and i'm like how do you mess that up that's how you mess that up i literally just didn't care um but this season came back with a vengeance like especially since it started with him thinking that he was dead after the defenders and <clears throat> how the hand dropped a building on his head yeah and they never got into how'd you come back you know, they, 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 they never, never really got into that. Never like, got no, into no, it. He's yeah. just like, you're back. Okay. How long yeah. you been back? <laughs> you I know? don't know. I was dead for a few days. It was weird. Yeah. And it was like, why didn't you call? Why didn't you write? You know, what's yeah. going on with that? Um, so, yeah. So, all in all, I have to give this, like, Daredevil Season 3, four of a kind. It was a four of a kind all the way across the board. I mean, look, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. Look at that right there. Four of a kind. Um, because, dude, I was... I was super happy, mm -hmm. super happy um, with the way that, that came down. Now, is the status of the series still up in the air with the whole Disney Channel shift thing going on? Or? Until further notice, it's done. So what would you say as a as a series finale? series finale? As a series finale, it was actually at a really good spot. They did do the post-credit teaser of Dexter being operated on Dragon. Hello. Um, Sounds like a bug, Drake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what's in the tower, dude. It's been a, it's been a rough month. Um, but in a nutshell, um, they did the post credit scene of Dexter having his spine operated on and having some augmentations so he'll be able to walk again. And they did the close-up shot of his eyes opening and a bullseye was in his eyes. And it's like, okay, yeah, we know he's bullseye at this point. Um, but that was it. And... The way that it ended with the agreeing of open up, opening up the law firm again, um, it could have gone either way. But since it's a comic book show, it's, and everything's back to normal. Dee, 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 and you can end it there. So it was yeah. perfectly fine. Perfectly fine as a series finale. Yeah. Good. So, Good. so yeah. Now, on to your show. <laughs> oh, yeah. We were going to talk about my show, too. I got yeah, so wrapped up. I kind of forgot where I was and what yeah. I was doing. Yeah, yeah, no, your show, man, because uh, this uh, is a new the, uh, season. Yeah, new season, <laughs> new Cloak season. and Dagger. New season, Cloak and Dagger. All right. Uh, I watched the episode last night, and I enjoyed it a lot. Um, the episode is called Nervous Energy, uh, although after watching it, I decided to call it Everyone's Got Baggage. <laughs> <laughs> because, again, the uh, whoever's directing this show is real good with their visual, it was real good about, and really likes their visual motor, uh, visual Story metaphors <laughs> yeah so uh we start off the episode with a nod back to the first start of the first season with tandy going back to ballet yep trying to trying to recapture the life she lost when her father died and so you see her getting ready for ballet and she's happy and she's getting into ballet and the mm -hmm. teacher makes some snide comments like if you're new don't try so hard just try about, don't lift so much, just try for control. And she gets like this look like, it's not working. And you <laughs> see that while she hopes to recapture her life and seamlessly recover who she was, it's mm -hmm. not as easy as you would think. Nope. Yep. Yeah, no, and... and... She's like, oh, I'm a little scared and nervous. Can I do this? Can I be the person I was? Well, honey, you really can't go home again. But okay, <laughs> you're going to try anyway. You know. Meanwhile... Ty is my boy. Ty, my really boy, good, Ty. Ty really good at teleporting. So he's teleporting around, and he's watching drug dealers. And he's mm -hmm. watching like 
his kids his own age standing around laughing yep. talking while and they're just hanging out and slinging drugs and doing their thing and he's like eavesdropping them and they're living the life they're they're criminals and they're living a life of freedom a carefree life of freedom that he can no longer have Right. So there's a weird kind of like jet, and he's trying to do the right thing. He watches them. He tracks the guys back, and then he steals all their stuff. And the way they show him stealing the stuff is great because the guys like, the, the guy's got the bag. He throws the bag down. He turns around. He turns back. The bag is gone. Mm-hmm. While he's like, "Where's the bag?" He turns back to the, again, and now all the money pile on the table is gone. He's like, "What the hell?" Every time yeah. he turns around, so because because there's time. Poof. Grab. 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 Mm-hmm. Poof. Grab. 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 Poof. Poof grab. 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 Yep. Yeah. He's a teleporter who does not need line of sight, and he is just all over the place grabbing things. Yep, and I was like, hey, where'd the bag go? Where, where's and the people bag? are freaking out, and they're running around, and he steals all the money and mm-hmm. all the drugs. And uh, so he's dragging around this giant bag of stuff. I mean, while they cut to Tandy, coming back with her giant bag of ballet stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, it's not a metaphor for they're carrying their baggage around with them as they try to fit into their new lives. Oh, not at all. Not at all. Not at... I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I saw that. Okay. All right. I see where you're going there and I can respect it. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I'm like, there's going to be some kids. You just made someone's uh, uh, third week essay for film analysis class. Easy. <laughs> Yeah, super easy. Barely oh. a complication. And pretty much... The other thing is copywritten. <laughs> pretty much in this episode, everybody you see has a huge backpack or bag. It's mm-hmm. this kind of running trope through the whole thing. And I'm like, okay, well played there, well played there. Now, um, so, and then we cut to uh, Latte Cop, who's back. She doesn't yep. look good. No. She's haggard. No. She's thin. She's not wearing makeup. And she can't shoot. Her aim's off. She she empties her whole gun almost at, at the range. She gets one shot barely on target. And, and the guy's like, let me look at your gun. Because, like, well, the only way she Unless her that, grouping is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Which, <laughs> and the, uh, he's looking at her gun and he's, to see if there's something wrong with the gun. He looks at it and she goes, is the side off? He goes, no, the gun's perfect. Must be in your head. <laughs> and you're like, he's right. It is in your head. Like, there's no reason why you can't shoot that good. We know you can shoot that good. Mm-hmm. There's something wrong with you. And, of course, she's flashing back to her boyfriend being fridged. <laughs> I, I was actually talking to my uh, my friend about that, and I'm like, they literally fridged the boyfriend. And I'm yeah. like, I actually got to give him props for that. In case you don't know, fridging is fridging is because they in order to give the superhero a dramatic backstory, they dramatically and graphically kill his one true love, usually by finding him, opening up, and finding them dead in the refrigerator. So much so, it got the term fridging. And then, of course, they do that to her boyfriend. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Well, yeah, yeah, because he played just as much of a role as the girlfriends in most of the other yeah. things. So, okay, good yeah. reversal. And uh, you know, so and again, a good nod, to, good nod to the genre and everything. So uh, she's not, and she's paranoid. She's looking around. She thinks someone's watching her. She gets in her car, and suddenly her car shakes and bottoms out. Out because Ty is teleported in with four hundred pounds of money, cocaine, and drugs in the back of her car. He goes, "Look." I got you a present. And she's like, what did you do? <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, yeah, what just, what, what Yeah, here she's, oh, by the way, she's having to pop ant pills to keep herself from completely going insane. Yeah, and, because um, And here's the thing. Yeah. She's earned that PTSD. <laughs> it's not like, oh, she's developing a drug problem. No, this woman is broken. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and then, now she has a little black boy that goes, poof, I'm in your back seat. Like, Stop doing that. Never do that again. Yeah, you, 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 sorry, you don't usually scare like that. <laughs> and he's like... Like, don't you? You, like, you promise okay, you'd never do try, that. I brought you a present. Look, I brought. I got all these illegal drugs, money, and guns off the street. I did good. And she's like, "What did you do?" But I, I stole them from from the guys who were gonna yeah, who and, were gonna set up shop. And she's like, "Yeah, you stole them from those dudes. They don't know who you are, so they're gonna think it's the competition, and then they're gonna start a drug war with the competition. And you just made things worse. Yeah, you made things worse. <laughs> You're gonna start a drug war. People are gonna get killed, and the really evil gang is gonna destroy these guys and take over the whole city. And then it's gonna be a thousand times worse." He's like, "But I was just trying to help." She's like, "Stop trying. Hide, hide out, lay low." Stay quiet until I can find a way to clean your, clear your name. He's like, that's never going to happen. And yeah, she's like, exactly. But everything you do is going to make it worse. Because the theme of this series is Ty can't catch a break. <laughs> well, they, and um, he, he does have a great conversation with her on that. Yeah. With the, um, with the whole, you know, you're asking me to wait for the slow needle of justice. 
do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> yeah. Like, I did that once already, and now I'm here. The, so now you're asking yeah. me to do it again to say that things are going to get better? The Come guy, on. Yeah, the guys, I, the guys I stole this from were 14 years old. Do you think that Sol Neal's going to help them out? What happens to them? Yeah. And she's like, well, what you need to do is you need to get the big bosses confessing on tape. That's the only way we'll ever make a change. He's like, okay, noted. Now, it's very interesting on that one because um, this is very much an homage to the original comics. Mm -hmm. um, I've mentioned before, but i got to do it again because that was over three months ago. Um, Cloak and Dagger <clears throat> were spinoff characters in Spider-Man. Ironically, their big bad was the Kingpin for a very long time. Um, but they started off essentially as a D.A.R.E. comic. You know, the, the D.A.R.E. program, like D.A.R.E. to keep kids off drugs and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And they were originally given their powers um, with a drug manufacturer experimenting on them. <laughs> and um, their whole thing was, we take down drug dealers and, and daggers, daggers can cure drug addiction and Cloak feeds on the darkness in people's souls and he makes the drug dealers disappear. But we, we are against drugs. We are two kids that are against drugs and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay. Well, since the first season established the voodoo thing, took it out of New York, did a whole bunch of good stuff. All right, so let's see where second season is going. Oh, anti-drugs. All right, let's see where they go with this. Yeah. But it turns out that this doesn't seem to be as much anti-drug as it is anti-drug war. So I'm kind of going, well, well played. Yeah, well, 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 part of the reason why he's going after the, uh, the, the kids, those are the kids that worked for his brother's friend mm -hmm. and for uh, Narc Narc's cop. You caught so, that. Yeah, so, <laughs> he, at, so he's still going after, in a way, he's still going dealing and processing with his baggage from his whole life. And he's trying to, he's trying to work through it by going after the same kind of people who ruined his life. Mm -hmm. now That's important because we cut over to Tandy and Tandy's in group with her mom uh, a a uh, uh, spousal abuse group. Well, before you go on with that, mm -hmm. I do I do actually wanted to bring up something that was really interesting to me about mm -hmm. that scene, which was um he is going after those people, but she makes it clear like you're still wanted for being a cop killer, but the cop um, the cop that framed you and ruined your life is gone. Yeah. So you, you, you we not, can't get him to testify because he's gone yeah uh, kind of a yeah kind of a <laughs> reminder <laughs> of know, last know. season he beat the cop that ruined his life by absorbing him into a plane of eternal darkness well <laughs> the we, likes no, of which he beat him <laughs> yes let him go and when the guy chose not to walk away he was swallowed <laughs> up into the great <laughs> nothingness he is now an extra in the never-ending story yeah. and she's kind of going unless we can find him we can't clear you quickly. <laughs> yeah. So your fingerprints are on everything, and now your fingerprints are on all of this crap too. Yeah. Like you're so, not helping yourself. So I, I wanted to point that out because it's really easy yeah. to say she's just kind of being a jerk, and she is, but she's also right. Yeah. In the we can't prove that the dude killed your brother because now he's gone. We don't know where he is. You don't know where he is. Um, and I, we can't make him testify. I don't know where he is, but I don't think he's coming back. And now all of the evidence, including this $150,000 in cash and $250,000 worth of cocaine, all have your fingerprints on it, so it all points to you. So thanks for trying to help, but remember you're still a teenager and you don't know how this works. And so yeah. I, I just, I, I had to point that out. I, Go on. I, you know, I also <laughs> crack up on the fact that in the first season, mm -hmm. Tandy is in the church mm -hmm. and she steals drugs mm -hmm. and money and she uses the drugs and the money. Second season, Ty is in the church. He steals drugs and money and keeps turning it into the cops. So if you live in a church, you're going to end up stealing drugs and money. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> what is this guy's still doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> still trying to do the right thing. Uh, I'm going to flash forward just a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's a real funny scene where Tandy and Ty are talking. And Tandy's going through his clothes. And she's like, are these even clean? He goes, no. Uh. And she's like, why are they folded? 
He's folding his dirty laundry. That's the kind of guy he is. Yeah, yeah, because that his parents raised him right. Yeah. It's just a matter of the world took the dude that did everything right and did exactly what his mom was afraid of. And, and she even know? says, like, like he goes, he goes, well, I don't really have an opportunity to do laundry. And she, he goes, how did you do it? She goes, I would just steal new clothes. <laughs> and he's like, okay, well, next time you're out, she yeah. goes, I'll, t- I'll steal you some T-shirts and some and some underwear. Yeah, clean socks and underwear. Uh, clean socks yeah. and underwear. And now the f- hilarious thing about that, that scene that cracked me up, and it really shows about who they are. Ty literally has had hundreds of thousands of dollars in his hand. It never occurred to him to peel off a 20 and go Bye. to Sears <laughs> And buy some clean socks and underwear. Also, yeah, pull, off, a, pull out a tin and do his laundry. And do his laundry. <laughs> also, he can teleport into any store after hours and take anything as one. Still did not occur to him to do this. Nope. Still, because Tansy is the one who steals, he does the right thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really glad you pointed that out. Yeah. Because cause we'll even talk even... a little bit more about their argument. Yes. So, so go then, on. So <laughs> then we go, we cut, but we, jumping back, we cut mm-hmm. to Tandy, and Tandy is in group with her mom. And everyone's sitting around, and they are all open and happy and discussing. Except Standy, Candy, arms crossed, legs crossed, leaning back in the chair. The classic, like, "Don't talk to me. I'm not engaging. Leave me alone." Look. And her mom is her mom is confessing, like, why she was such a psycho, why she was so messed up, mm-hmm. and is being very honest about it. And is like, "It was wrong. It was stupid. Here's my reasons for doing it, but it was stupid, and I'm sorry." And that was when I fell in love with her mom. Yeah, because her mom was cognizant enough to realize, like, I had the stupid idea that if Candy knew her father was an, uh, was uh, abusive, abusive yeah. she would she would want she would hook up with an abusive guy when she got older. So I wanted to protect her and hide it from her. And that was even a worse mistake. I hurt her even more with the lie. And I'm sorry. And I'm like, wow, that is that is impressive. And then her response is, it's okay, mom. I understand you did it for the right, the right, wrong thing for the right things, right reasons. I kind of think it was heroic. And I'm like, oh, God, that is a bullshit answer. Yeah, actually, it was. Yeah. And again, you find out how much of a BS answer yeah. it was later on in the episode yep. where it's like, I'm saying exactly what I think I'm supposed to say just to get through this group. Yeah, I don't want to be here. And, and then like as a teenager, I had group therapy quite often. That is. And I'm not going to. No, no, no. I was the one that wanted it. But I know all the people that didn't. So they're just like... Yeah, that was yes, like... You're like, oh, I know it. who that person is. Uh-huh. I, I know that response. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that is right. I did the wrong thing. I I have looked upon my actions and I regret them. And I should have done something better. Can you call on someone else now? Kind of thing. And yeah. Yeah. They, and then they moved to another woman who's like, I'm only here because my friend insisted I, I come to therapy if she, she was going to let me crash on like her couch. And they're like, why are you crashing our couch? And Tandy's like, why are your wrists bruised? She's like, nothing. Drops her wallet. Mm-hmm. Tandy gets her wallet, gives it back to her, makes, does her con thing of, oh, I was a waitress, true, haha, ha, let's, let's have an emotional connection, tell me about your boyfriend, let me find out a little more about, about you, and then later on, she's going through her phone where she's got photos of every driver's license of every woman in group, not creepy or stalkerish at all. No, no, it yeah. really isn't. So it turns out, Tandy is stalking the women's from group and taking it out on their abusive helping. boyfriend. Helping. She's, she's helping. She's helping. She's helping. By taking out her abusive boyfriends. Meanwhile, Ty is tele- thinks of teleportation, creeping on his family. His mom, his dad finds out his mom and dad are separated now, probably because of him. By creeping on his uh, Avita, like being all sad he can't be with her, being angry when she she's getting chatted up by a, a football player, being real happy when the football player walks away, and then feeling real guilty about being real happy, and then teleports away when she feel when she's like, wait, he's watching me. Oh look, he's yeah. Coming. Because she knows. sometimes he forgets that his girlfriend is magic. <laughs> yeah, she does magic she does. that has been proven to be real. In Ty's life. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. She knows he's there. And uh, so uh, they're doing this. And then she decides to... Uh, so, meanwhile, Ty's like, oh, oh, man. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, Tandy's like fo- stalking the, the angry waitress mm-hmm. from the group. Follows her back. She's getting back together with her boyfriend. And she's like, oh, she's yep. standing outside. was waiting just waiting for, for it to go down. 
Yeah. And yeah. she sees him fighting. And she's like, am I going to have to go on there and stab someone? Because she's, she's totally okay with stabbing people. <laughs> Kind of like Verusa Bulk and um and I was it Happy Gilmore or no um Bobby Boo Waterboy yeah Waterboy. that whole you, you want me to stab him you, you, you want me to, you want me to stab that guy I can stab that I can just, yeah you know? I'm okay with it <laughs> you know what's one more but uh, <laughs> uh, but they have the fight she leaves angry and she sneaks in and she proceeds to carve leave her alone mm-hmm. in the wall with her magic knife and just cut up everything this guy owns while he's sleeping mm-hmm. cuts the couch skips over him cuts more like if if i hadn't stopped i could have cut you in half and she could have mm-hmm. and then she leaves and she's like oh i did yeah. my good deed and here we go yeah and he's like looking at the whole thing going like huh what the what just ha- oh my god my place has been leave her alone <laughs> you know Meanwhile, and, but, yeah. yeah. Oh, also another thing: the, the the whole thing about the process being so. When he sees her, he's like, "Did you steal from me?" She goes, "Yeah, I got you your physics book and the syllabus for all your classes." So he's having her break into his school and bring him his homework, because he doesn't want to fall behind. Are you saying okay? We get it. He's good. He's or good. Cause... He's the good son. <laughs> you know. And then later on, they do movie night once a week, once a week to keep him going crazy. And he's teleporting all over the place, setting up the equipment. She's like, "You're getting good at that." Goes, I've been practicing. <laughs> got she, nothing else to do. And she's like, "Yeah, well, I, I got stabby, glowy stabby knives. I've been practicing too." But I mean, what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's only so many ways you can glow stabby people. And it's interesting because it's really good to see them as friends. Like yeah, they're really they're really being as friends. And then comes the stupid. <laughs> yeah, and then they have. Uh, uh, does the argument come before he, she saves his ass or after he saves his ass? Um, before. Okay, so yeah, they have the big argument because he's like, "I've been keeping tabs on all my friends," and he's like, I've been "All keep- the people I care about." Yeah, all the people yeah. I care about. And he was like, "By the way, why did you cut that woman's uh, axle in half?" And she's like, "What?" Oh no, it was after. It was, was after. after. Yeah, yeah right. it was after. So, well, well, so so what happens is, Ty realizing he screwed up is going to fix it and he's going to fix it by not following the advice of staying low and staying quiet and keeping his head down because that has never worked for him once yeah now over the course of their talk they both kind of go you know do you miss do you miss being out there helping people it's like yeah i miss it but we're not very good at it we're not doing that we're just keeping our heads down blah 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 neither one of us are doing superhero stuff i know i'm not oh well i'm not either no no yeah yeah no they're both they're both lying to each other and they're both denying it and meanwhile they're both sneaking around doing the exact same thing they're denying it's like, at least people yeah. are not trying to kill us. We're not dodging bullets. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Nah. Says the guy who's who's kid teleports from rooftop to Brent to be from rooftop to rooftop while he follows drug dealers on electric scooters. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he he what do they call? It? He is a good spy boy. He is. He's the best. He's spy a very boy good ever, spy boy. Very good spy boy. And uh, he uh, so he decides to so he goes into the big gang's drug house and hits them. And the first thing he knows when you come now, in... it's funny. When he did that, I'm like, okay, so he robbed the other drug, but he's trying to be Omar from The Wire. Okay, yeah. all right. He's trying to be like that third force to be like, don't war with them. I'm your real enemy. Yeah, so by hitting the other side, then it's suddenly like, no, you realize that there's a new player in town and you need... War is the last thing you need. Mm-hmm. You need to figure out what's... So actually, not a bad play. But would have been great in the hands of somebody with a little bit more experience, <laughs> a little uh, somebody that was a yeah. little more savvy. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just saying that some some of the more uh, I, I, the pro- problem is the only one I have is a DC uh, DC character, which would be Batman. Would be like, I can't. Oh, what are you doing? Honestly, Nightwing would have been like. All right, that was a good plan, but let me kind of show you how it's done. Yeah, yeah. You know? Obviously, <laughs> your your heart's in the right place. Kid, but let me let me show you how this works. Yeah. And uh, so he goes. Need our in, friend the question. So know? he goes in, and it's a it's a very serious operation. Mm-hmm. They got they've got lookouts and cars, uh, so you can't get within three blocks of the place without being ID'd. Mm-hmm. Uh, they go in. The girls mixing the drugs are all in their underwear, so they can't be wearing wires or hiding product. Exactly. Uh, so all this is going on, and he's just teleporting in, and he this he can't even steal. There's so much stuff here, he can't steal it all. He can only steal some of it. Yeah. And the accountant, the second he sees the money gone, 
His reaction is long, ring, long, is ring the bell. Yeah, an emergency fire alarm. And I'm like, oh, that's a serious. These people were prepared. Well, they, <laughs> that's part of being at that level in the game. Yeah, because as soon as you have one of those machines that counts money for you, yeah, you are a target. <laughs> that's the whole thing. So yeah, you can't trust your employees. You can't trust your street people. Um, everybody is being watched all the time. Just in case something like this happens. It's not. If it's not it's teleporting not that I don't dude, trust my people. I just remove temptation. No, it's not that I don't trust my people. Is that I know how people get when there's millions of dollars in cash Take and million jacket. more <laughs> and millions more in product right yeah. in front of them. You know. So he he starts he starts stealing stuff. Everyone's freaking yeah. out. They're I'm just screaming. saying that ain't temptation. Yeah. That's motive with a universal adapter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Because you're 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 one idiot away from having you're one idiot away from having to put another body in the cooler. <laughs> um, another eight. Because there's the idiot, the people who knew the idiot, the one that didn't tell you about the idiot, the one that did tell you about the idiot, and the ones who the idiot might have inspired. Yeah. That's what it's like at that level. This is why being a drug dealer is bad, guys, because once you get fiscally successful, your life is over. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> so, uh, so, and he's he's stealing stuff, but he's just picking he's picking random items off of the off of a warehouse full of contraband. <laughs> so yes, he's hitting him, but he's not hitting he's not taking everything. He's just yeah. taking enough to freak him out. And of course, he gets caught. He gets caught. He gets sucker punched, and they start wailing on him. Yeah, let's take a look. <laughs> You know, who are you? Get the car. Oh, oh. And, and, and we've established like, that he has problems teleporting away when people are looking at him. Or beating him. Yeah. As we um as we established with the basketball team last season. Yeah. Um, so he so he's getting he's getting beaten and it's not going well for him. And then suddenly someone cuts the legs off one of the heavy warehouse shelves, collapsing it, it on the guy's car. Okay, him. see, I didn't realize that she cut the legs off. I just saw it fall, so I thought it was just I actually mirror. saw, no, I saw, I, I, was, I was watching, I saw the legs, they're cut and they fall. So the second I saw it, I knew it was Tandy. I also knew, <laughs> Tandy just killed those guys. <laughs> yeah. Just flat out, oh, look, they're dead now. Because that they, okay, much okay, stuff, it's, okay, it's all maybe drugs they're and just stuff. stunned. Maybe they're just unconscious. But I'm not going to 18. They had 300 pounds of drugs and glass fall on yeah. them. Yeah. If it wasn't the force or the being cut in an organ, it literally is ODing. So. Well, hey, I'm sure. I am sure that an illegal drug cartel has really good medical insurance. <laughs> no meetings. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, so yeah. So yeah, and and she she drags him out of there and. Uh, then they have that uh, that fight because mm-hmm. he's like she's like what were you doing what and, and she's like she's angry at him and and again it's funny because it's a callback to his conversation with his dad he's like I know what you're gonna say he goes no you don't I wanted to know why you didn't invite me along yeah <laughs> I, and, been go- I have and, been going crazy yeah and she's like you know note to self you're still a horrible liar oh <laughs> like that ain't I, you I, I do want to do a callback to earlier in the episode mm-hmm. because again Tandy is still Tandy. She's with her mom. Her mom and, and her are making dinner, having that idyllic family dinner that mom's fiance always wanted him to have. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of living, not back to early season. And everything's going great. And then mom starts talking about hard things. And mom starts talking about group. And Tandy's like, oh, wow, silly me. I forgot. I have an emergency ballet meeting I got to get to. Run. I've got to leave <laughs> right now. Run. Bye. And mom's like, Oh look, there's Tandy running away from her emotions again. I should have known better. I shouldn't have done this at dinner. Oh well. <laughs> like mom is not fooled. And Tandy runs off and she she runs off and, and does stupid stuff. So Tandy is still running away from her emotions, even though she's trying to get back into her perfect idyllic life. Mm-hmm. And uh uh so then they have the big fight and he calls her on like, Why'd you cut that woman's axle on her SUV? And she's like are you spying on me? He says, I told you. I keep tabs I, on everyone, everyone I that care. I care about. And you fit squarely into that category. <laughs> yeah. And when he said that, I noticed something real interesting. Because mm-hmm. she was like, you're stupid, you're stupid, blah, 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 blah. And he is like, yeah, and I know you've been lying too, so let's talk squarely. And then she's like, oh, you caught me at something? Well, 
no, 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 no. I'm going to start arguing like this. And he's like, I told you. I'm like, oh, how dare you have been spying on me? Okay, I see that that is a distraction from me calling you on your stuff, but I told you that I kept tabs on the people I care about, and you fit squarely into that category. So I kind of told you that I've been keeping an eye on you because I said... I care about people, I keep my eyes on people, I figured you knew that I care about you in the same way that you care about me, so, dude, <laughs> and, um, and of course she does that thing that people who are running from their emotions do, which is change the subject and redeflect the guilt, yep. you know, so. Yeah, like, <clears throat> whoever wrote this show had a lot of arguments. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. And, and, and she's playing, she's playing true to type, mm-hmm. you know. And, uh, and of course they fight and they, and he, and she's like, well, I'm just gonna leave. He's like, leave them go. Mm -hmm. And she's like, uh, what, what that you, you weren't, you weren't supposed to do that. And she's like, fine, I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> so yeah, like, she kind of call, he kind of, he, he gets angry and he's not putting up with her stuff and, uh, she can go. Yeah. Actually, and that, let's take a look at that yeah. scene. Let's, yeah. let's take a look at that real quick. Cause, Cause yeah, there's it's... a moment on her face where she's like, what? Yeah. Well, okay then. And it's like, well, like, what, 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 what are you talking about? And he's like, well, what, what happened? <laughs> like, what happened? Like, why were you out doing that? It's like, I don't know. Everything was popping around fast. I mean, got a little charged and a little cocky. What the hell were you, you doing know? there in the first place? Didn't time? see the guy. I mean, what happened to laying low? <laughs> like, what are you doing out there in the first place? How did that work out? I'm trying to make up for a mistake. And how did that work out? <laughs> And didn't. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, kind of didn't, but. How'd you find me? So, I didn't yeah, want to how'd you home, find me, man? So I that, came that, here. That's, you know. And I found. Yeah. I, just, map. I, I didn't want to go home, so I came here and I and found a map mistake. with all of these locations. <laughs> like, dude, you're really bad at this. <laughs> Yeah, I, I found your yeah, your, sure. your your psycho serial killer wall this? with everything on it, and like mm, I'm going here today at 8 p.m. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I, I know what you're gonna say. It's stupid. And it's like, no, that's not what I what I was gonna say was why didn't you ask me to help? Yeah, the call back to conversation. <laughs> uh -huh. Like, never. Every time he we should talk, just this seemed like you were doing good because it doesn't doesn't work. Yeah, you know, you it's like every time we talked, you were doing well. So I didn't call you. Yeah, I didn't call you because stuff was going good for you, and. Honestly, I can't be mad at that. You know, yeah. I really can't because it was like, you know, yeah, I'm going out. I'm doing that whole thing. It's like, why didn't you call me? Because we're supposed to be doing this together. It's because your stuff is getting better and doing this would tear your life apart just like it did mine. Oh, well, well, I mean, granted, I know you've been going out and doing stuff without me. And I think it's a bad idea, but that's your call. And it kind of made me flash back to Spider-Man Homecoming mm -hmm. where... Tony Stark is yelling at Peter, saying, you know, you do this, you do that, you make a mistake, somebody dies, that's on you. But you make a mistake and you die, I feel like that's on me. <laughs> you yeah. know? And I'm like, okay, all right, so. Yeah. So they, they have the fight, she storms off. Um, uh, meanwhile, meanwhile, things are going bad for Latte Cop. Of course. She's like, She's at home. She's trying to pull herself together. She's still taking more pills, freaking out. Meanwhile, she gets a call from her boss, who is now screaming at her on the phone because someone hit the other gang. <laughs> and he's angry at her because she let this happen. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. Well, because the gangs work for somebody. And somebody's not a team player all of a sudden. And, well, their point man is gone. But obviously the corruption goes a lot higher than we thought. Of course when it does. When her own boss is upset. Not upset, like, not upset that, you know, this might boil in the street. More just upset that they got hit. And she's like, I agree. This is horrible. This is horrible. And she goes, well, I got a guy. He says, okay, we'll, we'll get him for a sit down. We'll have everyone talk. We'll prevent a war. We'll, I, we'll make this good. I will, I will use my resources and my connection to make this good. And the cops like, and her boss is like, yeah, you better. Yeah. And she talks about how she's going to have her guy set up a meet at a club where everyone will talk and work it out. And then you see Ty's keeping tabs on her, listen to all of this going, oh, all the big bosses are going to be confessing. Now, the part that you skipped over that is mm -hmm. really important to yes. this was one of the things that Tandy stole when she stole his textbooks was a little Tascam recorder. 
actually it's a really good test camera yeah, recorder. Really I know that, one. You know, um, like, so that like he the can... props guy just took one of the sound dudes. <laughs> it's one of the sound guys recorders. Yeah, because you know, I, it, it was like the Tascam um, C24. Yeah. And um, that thing was like that thing is like three hundred dollars. Yeah, okay? that's I mean, good. Here we use the Zoom H6, but it's one it's one of the recorders that are like that. So this yeah. thing can pick up the sound from an entire room. Yeah. Uh, you know, and he's like, "What's this for?" She's like, "I don't know." Um, personal notes, going over stuff, giving your own lectures. You know, but I don't know how to study, but I hear that this is important. So you have no idea how know. to study, do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, so yeah, because, and for the record, the recorders to record the lectures, but you have to be at the lectures in order to record them type thing, so. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I figured I'd, I'd have to let you know Yeah, that yeah, because, because that is germane yeah. to later on. <laughs> germane. <laughs> germane. <laughs> so, uh, so after this, uh, Ty confronts Tandy, and mm-hmm. she's like, oh, what are you doing here? Like, we're not, like, we're done. Like, I, I he's like, I have three things to say to you. First thing is, thank you for saving my ass. Mm-hmm. Uh, second thing is, I'm sorry. And third thing is, I need your help. And she's like, it, okay. It's very much that whole, you know, you know what? I it, and, and, you know, I mean, she's totally just going, you know, you know what? I hate it when you do that. You're right. I'm sorry. And thank you for saving my butt. Well, every time that you thank you very much. I need to leave the room so I can reset. Because <laughs> I was ready to fight. Just, oh! yeah, yes. She was not prepared for that conversation. Exactly. She's like, she's like, I I need to reset. Yeah. So so she's like, okay, you're a jerk. I'm a jerk. But that's okay. Because we're jerks together. So what are we going to do now? And he's like, okay, so this is what's going on. And then that's when they have the conversation. And she's going through his clothes. And they're having that conversation. And he's pulling out duct tape. And duct taping the uh, the audio recorder, and the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, "What is he doing? And what is she doing?" And I'm like, "Oh, he's like taping his t- the recorder inside of his jacket. I guess he's going to use it as a wire to try to eavesdrop on people." I'm like, "Wouldn't it just be better to put it in his pocket?" I'm like, "Okay, that seems kind of awkward and weird." And I'm like, "Why is she going through his things?" And then she starts putting on his clothes. I'm like, "Okay, this is getting even weirder. What the hell?" And she's like, tells him, "Stand up, take off your shirt." And he's like, "What?" She goes. Take off your shirt. He's like, really? And he gives her this look like, really? You have to play this game just to see me with my shirt off? So he takes his shirt off and shows off the fact that the mm-hmm. boy is ripped. Yeah. <laughs> he's got the... He's got he the, is an actor after all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's got the Marvel superhero abs. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Abs. And he kind of poses there. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking the director's like, no, you need to take your shirt, shirt off in this episode. He says, do I? Isn't it gratuitous? He goes, no, it's not gratuitous at all. It, it was a gratuity. It was like a 15-20% gratuity, okay? Or should we say, uh, for the ladies. Um, the, the, uh, and then she throws the shirt at him. He changes shirts. And she's dressing his head and getting all nice. And she comes over and she tears the sleeves off his shirt. And he's like, really? You have to tear <laughs> sleeves? He's like, yes, you are a fashion disaster. And then you realize she's dressing up and dressing him to go out to the club where the meet is going to happen. Yeah, and it's interesting because when they got dressed in that manner, it was very, very much, very much an homage to their comic book costumes. Because, um, again, Cloak and Dagger, he has the cloak that he had at the Mardi Gras episode, Mm -hmm. and all black. And she wears a white onesie. Yeah, so she's wearing this white oversized dress shirt belted with a Mm -hmm. sashed with a belt so it's kind of this weird kind of this peter pan jerkin thing going on Mm -hmm. and he's he's wearing a jean black jeans black Mm -hmm. t-shirt no sleeves and a real nice uh dinner jacket Mm -hmm. and uh uh and of course all the kids and the pumped up kicks oh yeah yeah. (laughs) um oh i think i also jumped over a a scene that i really really like i think you mean the basketball basketball versus um ballet yeah but before after they had their fight Sorry, sorry, I'm all over the place. But after they had the fight, it's a beautifully lensed scene where she she's upset. She she, she breaks into the ball, uh, the ball, uh, ballet hall after hours, and she's doing ballet in the dark. And every time, and as she's doing ballet, her hands are going because she's so overwhelmed with emotion. Meanwhile, Ty is in the uh, uh, rectory the, of, the, of the... In the church, in, yeah. In the, church, in the church, doing basketball. And he's doing basketball, and he's getting angry, and he starts bouncing the ball after the wall, and she starts spinning faster. And you kind of, again, it shows that they are they are tied together. And even though, and then they're 
When they fight, they both suffer. When they hurt, they both hurt. They are definitely a duo, and they need to work as a duo. And then after that, he drops that he drops that smooth line on her, mm-hmm. and now they're working as a duo, and it's awesome. Yeah. And then, and then they're just in the club. Yeah, and I gotta say, <laughs> one of, one of my favorite lines from this episode was "waffles or pancakes." Oh and yeah. He's like, what? what? <laughs> I hadn't even heard of that too. I was like, what? Yeah, yeah. I was like, huh? It's like, yeah, when when you walk with your when you walk with your lady, do you keep your hands um, poised like that, like pancakes, or do you lace your fingers together like waffles? So waffles or pancakes. And I'm like, huh, I never thought about it like that. You know, whole public displays of affection and breakfast food. Yeah. I like one of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. and, uh, and and then they cut, he's like, oh, waffles. And then they cut to them holding hands, waffle styles, in the club. You know, and yeah. it's a great it's a great transition. It's a cute little thing to set the scene. So she's she's running the con that they're a cop, they're a hot young couple out on the town, out for some fun, and not crime fighters out to out to uh, you know uh, run a, a, a clandestine investigation. And there's yeah. this great there's this great line where he's like, "How did you do that?" She's <laughs> like, "Do what? We just walked in here. There was a line of people waiting to get in here." Yeah. She's like, "Lines are for losers. Are you a loser?" And she's like, oh, "She's." I have been conning and walking past lines my entire, my growing up since I was six years old. Trust me, I know how to work a crowd. Yeah. And this was really interesting for me at that point because the only thing that came to my mind when that happened was white privilege. Yeah. It really was. Um, you know, I'm sorry guys, this is just a thing, but I have been like, I have been on the outside of many clubs over the course of my life. Um, primarily because I either wasn't dressed properly or because I had dark skin. But me walking into the club with a group of friends that just got let through that are calling me by name. And it's like, nah, he can't come in. Nah, club's full. Nah, this, nah, that. And um, But pretty white girl pretty much can walk into yeah. a club. But if the black dude tried it, there was going to be a fight. Yep. And, you know, so he she's never like. Gotten, he never would have gotten into that club. Yeah, never. But she's like, I didn't even think to stop. Uh-huh. Why would I? <laughs> yeah. And see, that's, and again. And she dragged it. And the only reason why he got in with her was because they were waffled. That's why she asked. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, and again, I, I just got to put this out there for the people that are probably triggered by me saying the WP word. Yeah. Um, again, it's not that you get extra stuff. It's that you don't get the same consequences for doing things that we do. Don't mean you're rich. It just means you don't get grabbed by the face and pushed on the ground when jumping over the line into a club. You know? I mean, that that's really, that's one of the small ways that it manifests. Yep. If you don't believe me, go stand in a line on the club and watch watch who gets let in without even stopping in line. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, it's it's really one of those it, things. So <sighs> Cliches are cliches for a reason. But... So uh, they're in there, and she's like, so you want to get a drink? And he's like, I don't drink. Because she's <laughs> her age, and he doesn't drink. And she's all, that's okay. I'll drink for both of us. <laughs> she's drinking. They're both dancing. He's kind of having fun. She's like, this is my world. <laughs> and he, uh, he, he sneaks in, teleports, and now we find out what all the detective is about. He is taping the uh, recorder to the underside of the table. And he's making sure that it's well secured, and he's messing around and he's doing with it. Meanwhile, security is coming and checking the place, and of course, they're going to look under the table. And he's taking his sweet time. Mm-hmm. And Tension's it's like building, building like, tension. Are, building are they going to see? Oh, he does he know the guy's there? Is he going to get out in time? What's going to happen? Is the guy going to look under the table? He he's going to look. And I'm like, dude, he teleports. He's cool. Yeah, of course. The <laughs> second the guy's like, yeah, I look under the table, and Ty's not there because Ty's like, please. I, I'll be long gone before the guy even bends over. Yeah, and he's just like, okay, and... Oh, look, nope, no, nobody there. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and seriously, if Ty was in a mood, the guy would be looking under the table, Ty would be sitting on the table. When he came back up, Ty would be back under the table. Now, remember, he's a good kid, and the good kids don't do that. You wouldn't That's knock clowning. Him. Yeah. That's like taunting. That's not Ty. That's more of a Beast Boy thing, anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. That. But, uh, <laughs> so, so they, uh, so, so they show that, and he's, he's good. Now, and he's like, and he's back, he's like, okay. I, I, I put because uh, put the recorder in, and she's like, "All right, well, what do we do now?" I goes, "I guess we just wait." And she's like, "Wait, Ty has to relax in a, in a uh, in a club with uh, and have fun <laughs> with music and like, dancing and dancing and alcohol." <laughs> like, oh no,s how will he cope? <laughs> 
this must be a horrible place for you. And that's and you know what? I gotta say, like, there's a scene from a movie, Black Sheep, from Pete Jackson, mm. where the guy explains that he's phobic of sheep. And, mm. of course, this is a movie where sheeps turn into zombies and attack people, and there's a sheep busting through the wall. And I'm reminded of a line from that movie every single time these situations come up, because it's like, oh, no, what will Tyrone, whatever will Tyrone do um, in a nightclub with alcohol and music and dancing and a friend? Oh, he's just going to have fun until we finish our mission. Oh, no. And it's like, yeah, whatever will he do? Why can't he relax? Because a sheep is going to start going through the door and it's like, wait, what, what, what is the... Like, wait, you're phobic of sheep? What is what is that? It's like the unreasonable and un irrational fear that something like that is going to happen. Because, <laughs> yeah, why doesn't Ty relax? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the thing is, it happened. That means it's no longer irrational. <laughs> why? Because it happened last week, and it's going to happen next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So It's not a phobia if it keeps happening. <laughs> So so, yeah. so then it was like they, you see that you see the, you see guys start getting wanted by security. They start going in the room, and Ty's like, "Hey, hey, it's going down, it's going down." And they're like, "Okay, good. So we just hang here. So what do we do now? I guess we just wait, and then I'll pick up the recorder when they're done." And then you see guy slammed against the window, splat. Yep. And it's like, "Hey, yeah, hey, look at that. You're yeah. having fun. A girl's oh, yeah. trying to give you. Woo! We got yeah. this. Uh, We're doing the uh, right and thing. He's like, yeah. We're having fun yeah. while doing it. We can relax. Nothing. There's no way we can screw this part up." Yeah. And of course. Um, now, it's actually kind of funny when this happens because if you think about it, um, Ty and Tandy, all the way back in Season 1, Episode 1, mm -hmm. met at a party while Ty was trying to relax and have fun. Yeah. And that screwed up for him because of her as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So he's like, I've been here. It doesn't work out well for me. Especially not like, when I you're around. I live here. She goes, yeah, that, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so, yeah. So they see, so they, they, you see a guy get slammed against the window so hard. Oh, we're, we're, we're getting there yeah. in just a sec. I'm just pulling up oh, the scene for scene. you. Yeah. Yeah. That there's, yeah, it is, it is not a pretty scene. You know? Because you're like, because normally you see there's a scuffle and you think, oh, hmm, things seem to go awry. This is more than a scuffle. And it's like, you know, maybe you did make the world a better place. Maybe you actually did something cool. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to try and relax. For just a minute, because, yeah, maybe we did do something good. That might be cool. And then, of course, you know, hey, yeah, look at all that. And I was like, hmm, yeah, we're going in. And, you know, they're doing the music and they're having the talk. They're, they're having yeah. the talk. It's like, hey, I'm having a good time. Are you okay? It's like, no, man, it's going down. It, it, it looks like it's finally going down. It's like, yeah, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. You said it's a gang leader summit. Now maybe they'll hammer it all out and they'll confess everything and you can give it to Detective Good Cop and that's a win. Everybody's happy, right? And yeah. he's like... You fixed all the things you screwed up and you made a better place. Yeah, you made yeah. the world a better place. He's like, yeah. Yeah, actually. I think I can relax for just a minute and... So oh! Ooh. Now, yeah. for those of you listening at that home... That was ugly. You, you see a silhouette of a person slam against the, the window of the door so hard they leave a blood splash. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a that is a very good cinematographic way of saying showing that was not natural fighting. A normal human being can't throw someone so hard they leave a blood smear. It was very much a mountain type thing. It yeah. was like okay, it's like yeah. that's the equivalent of the guy falling from a three story building. Yeah, so, or getting hit by a car, a car or something. So something. It's not just the things have gone bad in there. Things have gone biblically bad, <laughs> and they're like. Almost oh, comically bad, almost com one would say. Yes. <laughs> and so, you know, being the intrepid duo that they now are, they immediately do the rational thing of charging headlong into danger. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, these guys are superheroes because they see they see danger and they run at full speed towards uh -huh. it. Uh-huh. Yeah, because they're like, oh. Destiny! <laughs> And she's got the light knife, light knife, knife off, and, and he's, he's putting he's, on the hoodie. He's putting on the hoodie, and they, and he teleports in. She busts in, and everybody is dead, and the place looks like an explosion went off on yep. it. Blood everywhere. Everything's trash, and they're just standing around like, what the hell just happened? We were literally standing <laughs> outside the door. Yeah, not <laughs> two minutes ago. Not only are all these people look like they've been hit by trucks but it happened in only like 25 seconds yeah it's like how did all this stuff go bad and you see like the thought bubble over Ty going you had me relax I relaxed <laughs> yeah I relaxed at a party it's like <laughs> in the back of my mind is like Ty you cannot win you cannot win and 
That's He's our... buying a beagle that sleeps on top of the doghouse next episode. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I was trying to make a little redhead girl with a little joke tie in there, but I got nothing. <laughs> Because uh, he actually, you know, she said she actually digs him and knows who he is. So uh, the uh, so they just that's what this episode ends with them standing there around going, what, what, what happened? What, what do we do now? Like this, this was not the plan. Yeah. And they really they they opened up this season with. All right, let's do this. Yeah. You know, so. So but I uh, so at the end, I was like, for starters, I love that. They're a duo. Mm-hmm. They're a team now. They have an argument about why are we not a team, and then they have a fight because you're we're not a team because you lie. No, we're not a team because you lie. That's it. We're done. We're not a team because we both lie to each other. And then they're like, "This sucks. We need to be a team." And I was like, "Well, Tandy's not gonna. Tandy's not gonna come forward. She doesn't deal with emotions. Well, she's gonna away. So I guess Ty's gonna do the right thing, and admit and admit wrong and say what needs to be said. And she's like, "Yeah, you're right. Okay, fine. We're a team again. Let's go do this." And they do the team stuff. It's like, woohoo, we can fight crime and party. This is the best life ever. And he's like, no, we can't party. It is, okay. <laughs> and yeah, it almost my, is like the yeah. Tick and Arthur, yeah. actually, now yeah. that you put uh, that way. And, and, in my, and in my mind, in my mind, I'm guessing from the little bit I've seen, I haven't seen the second episode, but my best guess is we got some kind of creepy Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing going on with Latte Girl. Because remember, she got blasted by the super crazy juice as she got shot, got buried in the swamp, which we all know, like, magic bad things happen when you get buried in the swamp. And Only if come... it's in the swamp of Louisiana. Oh. Yeah. Oh. She was in the bayou for like 20... <laughs> she was in the bayou for like 24 hours, just steeping in the crazy. <laughs> and when she climbed out, she crushed the flower. The <laughs> flower that was symbolic of all the hopes and dreams of the Echo Scientist. Crush it, Kazumi! Crush, crush it! it. <laughs> you, you, yes! You <laughs> crush it! Crush your flower! Crush your flower! So I'm like, no, no. She's she's coming back with a vengeance. And then when you see her broken and non-functional and taking drugs because, oh! Oh, the pain and the voices! I'm like, oh no. She's, she's going to start hobgobbling here. She's going to start... I, I, I'm really, I'm, I would not be surprised if she starts talking to herself in the mirror and saying, I've done everything you've wanted to do. I've punished the wicked. You should thank me. <laughs> You'll be even better if they actually had Willem Dafoe play a reflection because that would be terrifying. You have a dark turn of mind. And the fact that Willem Dafoe... If Willem Dafoe plays the deflection of anyone... Including oh, Willem Dafoe, yeah. it's already yeah. terrifying. Oh, I, 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 dude, I have, I have a, uh, I have a script treatment for the best movie ever. Hmm. We're gonna get Willem Dafoe to play the villain. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's oh. all I need. Okay. All right. See, I actually, <laughs> I had a similar script not too long ago. I called it Intensity, and it was just gonna be Willem Dafoe, Christopher Walken, Anthony Hopkins, and um, um. Uh, no, that was it. Oh, and Liam Neeson having coffee. <laughs> oh, God. I, want to see that. <laughs> I don't care. I don't even want to. I just want to see, sit around and just talk about coffee and what's going on outside the window and just be like, I have no idea what's going to happen, but I can't look away. I can't blink. <laughs> yeah. I mean, literally, it would be like, yes. Could someone pass the cream? Of course I can pass the cream. I drink mine black like little bastards. You know, things like that. And uh, I have a very distinctive set of skills. <laughs> Passes the cream. <laughs> yeah. How much foam would you like on that? You know, yeah. I mean, that, that kind of thing. But, um, but uh, so I, what would you rate this one? I, 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 I'm going to give this one a flush mm. because they did a lot of callbacks to the earlier season. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Well, well, I, I'm doing side. that too. Why is that? It's like, hi, I'm going to give this one a flush right there. Hi, mm-hmm. flush. Um, so, uh, because they did a lot of a lot of callbacks to the earlier season with the imagery, uh, uh, they did a very good job of showing, not telling, that they are trying to recapture their lost lives, dealing with personal baggage, dealing with it poorly, and then calling each other on their crap, and going like, you know what, we've the whole first season was them coming to grips with the fact that. Their mojo is screwed up and mixed together, and what happens to one happens to the other, and they're in this together whether they like it or not, so they might as well just do it. 
So and and it's and they've worked past that. There we're not going to have the CW thing of three seasons of, oh, they're a team, they're not a team. And I also like the fact that they're not doing the whole like boyfriend girlfriend tension thing. Yeah. Because they're making it very oh, clear. Oh, the will they, won't they. they they're kills not, me. They're not going to do the will they, won't they. They had an opportunity where if they wanted to, they so could have made that scene where she's dressing him be a little more, and, and moving mm-hmm. him, be a little more, oh, will they, won't they. Oh, oh, oh are they going to get together? Let's find out on this the episode of Melrose Place. No, no. He's like, no, nah, I, I got a girl. And she's like, no, yeah, you need to lock that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, and, and, and Tanny is, it's so awesome. Yeah, she's 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 a train wreck when it comes to relationships, and she knows it. Are you kidding? She is so she is such a hot one, dude. She is so hot, mess. She's yeah. a hot hot <laughs> mess, just garbage so, fire. Actually, yeah. So I'm gonna give this one a flush because I thought they did a really. It was a really good season opener. A really good callbacks, and it started the action. And it and the way they ended, they ended it at a cliffhanger, but they did a good job of. <laughs> oh, you what definitely. What the hell? Uh-huh. And it's like, because I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there going, all I have to do is not hit the stop button, and the next episode will play in 23 seconds. No, no, I gotta save it. Because <laughs> that was very much a. Oh no, I want to see what happens next. Okay. So um, I'm, 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 I'm saying good things. See, it, it's interesting for me. Um, I also like the fact that they showed that they they don't change character overnight. Tandy got her old life, and she's trying, but she's still running away. She's still deflecting. She's still avoiding. She's still playing all the old head games, mm-hmm. but she's trying. <laughs> and and it doesn't get better overnight. No, no, and I, I do appreciate that. And she that. even says that later on. She even says that during their fight of, I'm so angry, I want to hurt people. So at least I can take it out on the people who deserve it. People like your dad? Yeah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it was interesting for me. It was very interesting for me because I was watching this one. And I'm like, hmm, all right, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Man, this one just got to it, didn't it? All mm-hmm. right, cool. I kind of like that. Um, I really do like the pace, how they just got into, by the way, this is a show. And, um, again, as I've said many, 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 many weeks in a row, this is a hard one for me because mm-hmm. I, as as a watcher, I identify with Ty so hard, so hard. I'm just like, yeah, I want to see him get a break, but that's the same me that wants character development in sitcoms. You know, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Yeah, um, he don't get dignity. Um, but what I do really like about this episode was it showed cost. Um, Mm -hmm. Because the thing that we didn't talk about was after Tandy did the vandalism and scared the dude. Oh, yeah. The abused chick went back to him. And she was like, oh, God. Well, she had to go back to him because, like, these psychos with chainsaws broke into his house and beat him up and then used a chainsaw to carve in the walls and, and, and these horrible guys. And he's so vulnerable and afraid. And he needs me. And, uh, uh. And she's like. Is that what happened? <laughs> oh, is that, is what, that happened? what happened? Yeah. Yeah. You know what happened? I. I. Not thinking that he's a good guy because I can't tell you I was a psycho who broke in and did all that. Right. You know. And yeah, and, and I do like her confrontation with him. I, I like that whole. So it was three guys that did it, huh? Yeah, three guys that knows that you drool in your sleep because I watched you. Yeah, that's right. It wasn't three guys. It was me. Oh. And I'll do it again. Is that next episode? Um, no, that was in this one. Oh, no, 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 no. My mistake. My mistake. Yes. Spoilers. Hmm? Wah, wah. It's all right. Um, but that's not a what? big spoiler. Yeah, but you know what? It is also that, that part I was actually thinking about just now. It does show that her and Ty Mojo's are, are in a link because all of a sudden Tandy can't win. <laughs> She's like, that's not how this works. <laughs> I'm not gonna go that far, but the thing well, is, well, it shows that there's, there's, she's, she's, she's now seeing there are consequences to her stuff where normally she would have run away mm-hmm. long before the yeah. consequences came to light because there was always fallout and and aftermath from everything she does and she left a wake of destruction behind her, but she always ran away from it. Yeah, she and, never looked back, and now she's looking back and she's like, oh wait. I can't just do what I want and have it work out always. <laughs> no, she's not Omori Povich anymore. She can't do what she won't. 
<laughs> she can't be like, catch me outside. How about that? No, no, no. She's not that person anymore. Especially since her mom is really getting her head together. I love her mom. You know? I, I really, I, I hated her mom, which they wanted you to hate her, until mom was like fighting with uh, assassin uh, water uh-huh. delivery girl and stabbed her in the shoulder with a kitchen knife. Because Tandy's like, I'm going to save my mom. I'm going to protect her. Oh, look, mom just saved herself. Okay. Because uh-huh. <laughs> mom's got some issues. <laughs> mom's got some issues. And it was like, nope, not letting this company take the only member of my family left alive. Yeah. So, hello. And I, I do wish, um, my hope for this season is that Tandy and her mom have the conversation where Tandy actually admits what happened to lawyer boyfriend. You know, that Ooh, that's a thing. Yeah, that's going to be a hard conversation. You know, because... Yeah, that would be nice if they actually, they actually come out, if she actually tells her mom that. Because that will break her mom, but her mom needs to hear it. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think it will break her mom, is the thing. I think that's one of those things where it was like, look, I saw it happen. I know what happened to him. He didn't leave. And... I actually got to know him while we were investigating the case, and he was a good dude. Yeah. He was a good dude. I was wrong, and they took him away from us. I just didn't know how to tell you. So, all in all, um, with um, so with this one, did I give my rating? Nope. Yeah. No, I didn't. Nope. Um, so, what I will say is with this one, I gave this, as a season premiere, a solid full house. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I had to give this thing a full mm-hmm. house right there. No, I said full house. Full house, Dan. That was weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had to give it a solid full house right there um, because it got to it. It said, okay, we know you watched um, the last thing, and we know you watched the last season. If you're back, thanks for coming back. Now, let's get to it. You know, it's <laughs> kind of weird because the first season was so short, you literally could have watched that as a continuation. That Like, the first season... The first season finale could also have been a mid-season thing. Especially That's, the fact that the follow-up, they're going to be there only at eight, eight, eight episodes. So and the first looked, season was only ten. Ten. So if you so. looked at it as an 18-season episode with a mid-season climax, it also works very, very well. Mm-hmm. So, um, again, it shows the people who are writing this and working on this know what they're doing. Yeah, and it shows that they care. Yeah. And that's a huge thing. This is not a paycheck thing. But, um, yeah, so guess what? That's our time. Actually, we're way over time for today. Yeah. Um, but that's all right. That's all right. I'm gonna be um, I'm gonna be doing a few more editing tricks and posting a lot more on the YouTubes as time. Oh goes Lord, forward. yeah, yeah. But you know, we start having a good time, and that's that's just what happens. You know, we start having a good time. You have a good time with me. I have a good time with you, and all of a sudden, boom! It's been like two and a half hours. <laughs> You know, which I'm fine with. I'm perfectly fine with. If ever you take a look at my mentor's work, you'll be like, oh, I get what he means on that now. You know, because my mentors, yeah, those guys, their average podcast is about three hours long. So, um, but with that, thank you for showing up today and letting me take up so much of your time. Because, yeah, I like taking up time. Yeah. And, um... All right, there we go. Yeah, thank you for showing up today, man. Um, mm-hmm. Cause this be. says, you know, I'm trying to get our schedules back on back on point. Um, and um, yeah, now that we're actually watching the show together and we're gonna be covering a second show um, as of next week, I just haven't decided which one it is. Um, I really, I'm wondering when uh, Lost in Space is coming out with the second episode. Well, we'll see. The second season. Yeah. Because I'd like, to, I'd like to revisit that one. Um, so would I. Um, but <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see where that comes down. But until then, thank you for, mm-hmm. um, you know, thank you for bearing with us and all that. And you know, and thank you guys, thank you guys for watching all of these videos, no matter how long they are. And a special shout out to NP City. Thank you guys for showing up. And for holding it down and all that stuff. Now, if you guys um, want us to cover a specific show, um, goes out to you guys, patrons. Of course, patrons have the priority and all that stuff. But if the patrons don't speak up and the rest of you guys want us to cover a specific show, I'm totally willing to listen. All you got to do 
is pull up a keyboard and type in back in the deck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. Um, leave us a comment on one of our YouTube videos. Just say, hey, yeah, what's up? I'm thinking of, I like this show. Remember, this show is called Bust a Recap. Um, follow us over on Twitter and join the Facebook group, Deckers on the Book. And of course, you know, um, listen to all of our stuff on SoundCloud and help us out by subscribing and following on all those other things. Um, All the help that we can get um, will really, really, really be appreciated. And of course, feel free to reach out to us by following us on Instagram. So I want to thank you guys for showing up. And this is, let's see, we might actually start doing a show on Tuesdays, um, which will change up my week from... um, from the weirdness it is right now to Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, which are all the days that we'll be live casting. And I'll be doing some small live casts, um, like 10 minutes at a time on YouTube Live. So this is this is gonna be a thing. But in the meantime, hook us up and you know come visit us on all those other places. Where can they find you, Mr. Henchman? Uh, they can find me at, uh, uh, sorry, Hench. Just give him the Instagram or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'm on Instagram, licensed to Hench. Uh, licensed, the number two, Hench on Instagram. And uh, Hench1, right? Hench1. Mm-hmm. Henchman1, at, one, yeah. At, uh, uh, at uh, Hench. Gmail. <laughs> Gmail. Sorry, yeah. I just I just crashed. Yeah, I know. You totally <laughs> the coffee just wore off. At yeah. gmail.com. And uh, that's uh, hench1 at gmail.com. Yeah, that's right. So I'm, so, I'm sorry, folks. We're gonna, caffeine just wore off. Brain shut down. We're going to put all that stuff up on the title yeah. card. But just remember, all you guys out there, if anybody tells you that you cannot have the hobbies that you like because of the circumstance of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, your disability, or your budget, you just tell them to take Take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, saying thank you guys for watching. Bust a recap. Night, everybody.